All right, check this out. Some fitness influencers tell you to change up your workouts all the time because novelty uh, gets your body to progress again. Other fitness influencers tell you to stick to a routine so you can get good at it, get strong, build more muscle. Here's the thing. They're both right. Here's the other thing. They're both also wrong. So here's how it works. When you first start training your body, the initial adaptations are from the central nervous system. Once the CNS adapts to the point where you're really stressing the muscle, then you see the ad adaptations in muscle. So you got to stick to a program long enough to get past that point, start focusing on building the muscle, and then switch programs so you can take advantage of novelty. I feel like when you give tips like that, it's like... Um our strategy is to let you know how confusing it is out there, and we're going to confuse you the more. <laughs> well, good thing we have a podcast. It's we can talk bigger about confusing it. mom. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A, right sure you follow us. You know, when, they, when they, they actually have done studies on this, and they show that um, when people exercise, the initial adaptations, the strength yeah. gains people get are all central nervous system. It's all through the CNS organizing itself better, putting out more output, improving form and technique, so someone then gets stronger from that. Then from there... Then you start to see the muscular adaptations. So this is why you want to stick to a routine long enough to take advantage of that. But then, of course, past a certain point, the muscles start to slow down their adaptation. Well, we felt felt the newbie gains. Yes. You know, that's just that's a real thing. And to you know venture into a new type of uh, skill or something, an adaptation that's like something you haven't done for a long time and pursued, like you're going to get that initial momentum there. But, you know, like some people get addicted to that and so want to jump ship right away and not necessarily do what you're saying is get good at it and be able to measure the results. Yes, and this is why there's some exercises that you want in your routine most of the time and other exercises, it doesn't make that big of a difference to switch all the time. Like if you're doing a bunch of machine exercises and usually machines fall into this category because they require less coordination and CNS adaptation from that standpoint. When you're doing like machine curls, machine preacher curl, machine cable curl, whatever, it doesn't make a big difference to switch them around, right? But if you're doing like a squat or a deadlift or like something really complex, like a clean, you want to stick to it long enough to learn the technique to get to the point where then you can stress the body and the muscles enough to get that those muscular gains that you're looking for. So that's why it's so confusing for people because you have like powerlifting coaches and strength coaches who are like, no, no, here's your routine. It's like the same exercises all the time. And they'll modify reps and rest periods and stuff like that. Then you've got other people like, no, change the workout all the time because of the novelty effect. Like they're both they're both right. You just want to understand kind of how they're both right so you can modify your routine the right way. Well, I've, I've heard Adam talk about this a lot too. And I've noticed the same thing is um, when – uh, there was this this movement towards like the muscle confusion and, and the changing up almost every exercise within the workout. So it was like you you're trying to stress the body in, in different ways, like constantly, like all the time. And they're thinking that that's progressing you forward when in fact it's like that became its own form of adaptation that your body is just like, OK, uh, I'm just going to react to what you're presenting me. And you're pretty much in that maintenance phase for a long period of time. Yeah. So I think there's some value. Like when I, when I think back to that time, uh, that period of my life where I was training this way, um, I was in really good strength. And I, I, I would say that like, I was doing a really good job of like kind of hitting a little bit of everything. I had my athletic training and my, my, my hypertrophy training, I had strength training and I kind of like yeah. smashed it all together. And so I would say that, you know, if you're somebody who is already in really good shape and you're not really trying to progress or maybe, you know, change your body composition that much, it's not a bad way to train. But if you're really trying to make progress and I think measure that progress and consistently make progress, I, I think that's where it got me was, was like, you know, I didn't know what was working better than other things. I had felt like I was in a, somewhat of a plateau for a very long time. And so that's the drawback of constantly, you know, mixing it up. I really think that because that both camps are right and both camps are wrong, it's really created this, like you're kind of either one or the other. Which is wrong, right? Yeah. Right, right. You're either the you're you're either the guy who mixes up every workout like I was, or you're the person that like sticks to these main exercises all the time. Or yeah, you know, so you you, you use the example of um 
like the strength community, like power lifters, stuff like that. I'd say there's that's a, a a newbie, and especially a lot of my female clients fell into that trap of like they have their little routine that they like. Yeah, because they, they don't really know much. Yeah, of, and yeah, they do yeah. their same weights, and it's just yep. like that. So you really seem to be you tend to be one or the other, unless you understand programming. The people that understand programming and do a good job, and then I also think that there's a um, a range. Like I know we write most all of our programs tend to phase and change things up every mm -hmm. three to four weeks. I would extend that to six, right? I would say anywhere in the three to six week range is probably when it's most necessary to. Now, obviously the reason why we do it is to keep you ahead of the plateau. And every week you continue to stretch that, the more likely you are to hit a plateau. The thinking, the logic behind why we do that is to keep it Keep keep it the same long enough to give the body some time to adapt and and progress, but then change it up quick enough that it doesn't get stuck in you plateau. Yeah, so you know, I, I want to comment on this too because you did train like this when you were competing, but you also had so much experience that you could jump into most exercises and right away be able to really target the muscle, and it yeah. wasn't a it, it was. It, you can pick up the skill very quickly for most exercises. Yep. So I think if you're really advanced, you probably can get away with changing it up much more often because you've got the skill, you've got the coordination. Yeah, that's a good point. You yeah. know what it should good, feel good like. foundation to work with. Right. But even with some exercises, though, that might not, might not be true. Like, like there was a period where you just deadlifted and you hadn't deadlifted for a long time. So it was this new exercise and there was this period of like CNS adaptation you had to go through and then you saw like these crazy muscle gains. Some exercises lend themselves better to being consistent with them, like deadlifts, squats, overhead presses. Cleans, well, I imagine like that anything that falls in the category of, uh, you know, the skill, right? High skill acquisition, right? Yeah. If it's something that takes a while to get good at it, you would think that that's going to drag out the the novelty curve yep. versus something that- Very could, good way to say that. You too. could get into it and instantly- get in the groove and figure it out. Well, the, the novelty curve on that's going to be much shorter because the body's already figured it out. It's like, oh, this is familiar. This is easy. It doesn't take a lot of brain power to to stabilize this and figure it all out. Totally. Versus, Which is why I think, you know, you can consistently squat for, you know, week in, week out, years in, years out, and still see great progress in it because of how difficult the movement is and how long it takes just to get good at just the, the the movement of the squad. Hundred percent. I think at that point too, when you're really good, adding novelty is more about preventing uh, like stress related injury. You know, like squatting is a, a, a great exercise, but it is somewhat limited by itself. It's one plane of mo mo you know movement. It's bilateral, and if you only ever do that, at some point you start to notice aches and yeah. pains and joint problems, especially as you get real strong. So right there, novelty is more of a like injury prevention and maintaining. Build your, up and reinforce the system yeah. in terms of like the, the stability. I think, yeah. And there's so many variations of the squat too, to that point to where it's like you can, it's such a fundamental movement. You can keep uh, consistently adding it in and just add one little um, variation to it and get a whole different result. Totally. All right. The giveaway for today's episode, MAPS Power Lift. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video and the first 24 hours that we drop this video, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications. If we pick you as the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section that you won. Nowhere else. It's in the comment section. Also, we've got these three bundles on sale right now, all of them up to nine months of planned workouts. Every single one of them, at least $300 off uh, the normal price. So it's a huge, huge promotion. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below to get set up. All right, here comes the show. Hey, have you guys ever had, I made something so good over the weekend and I'm not a, you guys know this, I'm not like the greatest cook in the world. I'm very basic, but I made, you ever eat schnitzel? Do you know what that is? Schnitzel? <laughs> like schnitzel? A, like a hot dog? Like no. A <laughs> yeah. Not, not waiter ger schnitzel. German uh, <laughs> uh, sausage or what? No. So I got the butcher box pork chops, which are so good. Okay. They're, they're, I've talked about this before. I'm not a fan of pork until I had their heritage pork chops. It tastes different. They're so good. They're really thick though. They come in like this. Yeah. So I cut them in half so that they're thin and I pound them down a little bit and then I get like egg, I, I take a few eggs and I beat them and then I dip in an egg and then I do seasoned breadcrumbs and I just got breadcrumbs with salt. That's a schnitzel? Garlic powder, um, parsley, like a few other things, right? And I bread it and then I like shallow fry it in olive oil and the cast iron. Oh my God. With that mashed sounds, potatoes. That sounds amazing. Yeah. So that's, good. That's, that's what a schnitzel is? That's, a, that's a schnitzel. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, I thought it was. Yeah, yeah I was thinking it had some sauerkraut and you know. That's why you I, could I, add that, I suppose. But a schnitzel, yeah, it's like a, a pork cutlet, or it could be veal yes, cutlet, yeah, uh, or chicken. I've seen chicken schnitzel as well. Yeah, yeah. so so good. Oh, that heritage pork is so tasty too. So I imagine that. Was and it was delicious. a fast cook. Yeah. Like I made it real so quick. Egg. Would you so use? Egg, like, do you use like a planko breadcrumb or what? Did you just use? regular. Panko. You, you could go. Panko. What is it? Is panko. 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 Yeah. You could do panko. <laughs> Isn't planko a game on that? Wasn't that? Wait, hold on. Planko. Wasn't that? Really? game on tv when you were sick home from uh, from you were at home from school and it was like it just they dropped it like the thing falls down. down those like pinks what was that to get was that to Pachinko? like the no it was planko and it wasn't wheel of fortune it was the price is right i think mm. was the other one. anyway uh italian seasoned breadcrumbs and then i add a little bit more of my seasoning and salt and you just bread them and i got the cast iron i put a little you know just enough olive oil to kind of fry it a little bit uh-huh Oh, and if you're listening, I want to try that. Oh, that man. Good. So good. And you eat it with mashed potatoes. Oh, Schnitzel for shizzle. Yeah. So, so we used to do those. that with our, our our chicken to dress that up a little bit. I used it. Would you say panko? Pan- panko. Panko. Remember, Doug lived in Japan yeah, for no, years. So I, say, I say it all wrong. <laughs> is it Japanese so. breadcrumbs? Is that what it is? It is. Yeah. So it means bread. Pawn okay. is bread. And they're really like if you just do it lightly too. It's as far as the calories and carbohydrates and stuff like that. It's yeah. very minimal. I just it was one of those things. You know, you look at it and it looks like it's fried, and so you in your head you go like, oh, that's like a deep fry. That's not going to be very healthy. But I, I used I used to do that when I was competing because I was eating so much chicken. I was always trying to find creative ways to do that. And one oh, I wasn't that, looking at calories. I bred the crap out of it. Man. No, I this was me. Covered it. And that's why. It. That's why I know it's like. By the way, it's not that bad. At least yeah. not the the. I say can't say it. Whatever it is, Pank- <laughs> Panko. Panko. I've been saying Pull it up. wrong for so long that it's like Panko. 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 So <laughs> no, the, the macros on it are, are relatively friendly. It's not. It's not bad at all. And if you do it lightly and you don't go crazy on it, it's it, it keeps the calories still pretty low. So it's a, a, Bro, you a great way to dress up a a, a a you know chicken dish. That's plain. you guys would have loved it. You guys would totally loved it. Anyway, totally. I read a statistic the, this weekend. I immediately thought of you, Adam, because I mm. know for a fact. You're going to think this is total bullshit. You're going to argue with me. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So have you heard this? Okay. Have you heard this before where someone says, would you rather take a million dollars today? Oh, God. Or we get a, or we get, had this argument this weekend about the, about the lotto because it was a billion dollars. No, somebody. not that. Not oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, it was, it was, somebody won, by the way. Yeah. Like 1.3 point point billion. What? 1. 3 billion. Billion. Somebody finally won? Yeah. 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 It was an agent, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what works for the government. <laughs> no. Was, uh. So, so I, I don't know if you've heard this before. It's like, okay, would yeah. you rather have a million dollars today? Or a penny today, and every day the total doubles for thirty days. Have you heard this before? Uh uh-uh. uh And if uh, you do the math, it would be double the penny. The penny yeah, today yeah. one cent, tomorrow two cents, tomorrow four cents. It doubles. Turns out to be way more money than the million dollars. And basically, it's illustrating like Compounding how interest. yeah, Compound like how interest. quickly things compound. Yeah. I read something this weekend that blew my mind. Okay. If you take a piece of paper, so you know how thin a piece of paper is. And you fold it in half 103 times. That's it. So half, 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 103 times. It'll it'll go the entire width of the universe. What? Yes. What are you talking about? I just learned this this weekend from some. If physicists. you fold a piece of paper in half, in half, so doubles in size, half, 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 103 half. times. It'll be the, the it'll be the length of the known universe that we know. <laughs> No way. I'm no, telling you, dude, I have the video. I would I have this. That. There's a physicist explaining the And you don't mean fold. Thing. You mean double the piece of paper. Yes. So it's fold in half each time, in half, in half, right? So each time it, it doubles in size. Tell me that's not the craziest this thing you're going to some that weird, size, like, that would shrink riddle? In size, no, 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 no. If you stack it up. I mean, if you take a piece of paper and fold it, it gets thicker, but it gets smaller, right? Yeah. If you fold some kind of I don't know how you fold. Divisible. I don't know how you would fold you a piece of paper that you, many times. You wouldn't be able to. Yeah, yeah, be exactly. Impossible. This is like the number pi. It just keeps going. Yeah. So here's another one. If you fold up the same piece of paper 42 times, just 42 times, you go to the moon with that with that length. How crazy is that? You know what? what it's funny you're bringing up stuff like this because blew my mind. I think you've yeah. shared this on the show before, sense. but it still blows my mind to do the the math on the difference between a million, a billion, and a trillion mm. oh, with the yeah. seconds. I know. Oh, dude. So a a million seconds is eleven days. Yeah. Right. And then a a billion seconds is. 31 years yeah. a trillion seconds is like 31,000 or 32,600 yeah. years yeah like so put that in dollars so forget seconds wait how much does the government spend it's, every year by the way 
So yeah, but that's how. <laughs> that's how how are we even spending? My buddy trades. and I we were talking about. It it. He, was, he was talking about what he would do with the lotto. Is what started this conversation. Oh, that's the worst game a, to play. By the a way, a billion dollars yeah. or that. I'm like, dude, you can't even fathom a billion. He's like, what are you talking about? I could, uh, him was like, <laughs> I was like, and I gave Just him buy that. a few islands. I gave him that, uh, like to try and guess. Like you give someone like, hey, a million seconds is eleven days. So what do you think a billion is? Like everybody's like, oh, probably thirty days or whatever like uh, that, or maybe one year. Thirty one years. Yeah, thirty one years. And then when you do the trillion, people were like, so off. I think that's so fascinating like how much money that is if you have a billion or a trillion dollar dollars this is why so right now unfathomable because you know the, the propaganda machine right now is trying to take down elon it's pretty obvious right they he just won and they're making this big deal about it in the media that that elon just got like he lost the most wealth of, of all of history i guess he's first place in the world guinness book of world record because <laughs> the stock went down yeah <laughs> but he's still a billionaire so, yeah, like he's still yeah, so yeah. like he lost more money than anybody's Dude, ever fine. lost he still has more money than anybody else. So, so. Dude, speaking of losing money, so there was a, a game, the Chargers versus the Jags this weekend. Uh, the Chargers are up 27 to nothing at halftime. So you can, at halftime, you can bet on the way the game's going and stuff like that. So, of course, 27 nothing, that there's like a handful of comebacks in the NFL where the other team That's pretty rare. Yeah, yeah so the saying. odds that team is going to win is extremely high. And I've done this before. Like, I've I've gambled on, on Mayweather before where I had to put a ton of money up just to win a little bit. But you're like, dude, the odds of this are extremely high. Mm -hmm. So this dude bets $1.4 million just to win $11,000. So $1.4 million on the Chargers. Knowing they're, that they're going to win. Yeah, he he like, thinks it's like a, a sealed well, deal, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's like 90. Like, so I it's think, 11 grand free, basically, is what he's thinking. Yes, exactly. He's just by transferring over there, I'm going to get that for sure. It's like a 90, 98% chance. I don't know what the percentage was exactly breakdown, but it's very, very high, right? They fucking lost. Oh! Dude. Dang. You lost a million dollars? 1.4 million. How much now? Okay, so what are the odds if let's say you the other way million, around? Yeah. Well, the other way around, you put eleven thousand dollars, you would have made one point four million. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, wow. if you put your one point four down, you would have you would have won. Hey, like, it's been some crazy games. I'm happy with the Niners, dude. We're taking it this year. Yeah, I'm, and it's I'm been call it right football's now. been fun to watch right now. It's, it's some great games. Yeah. So I, why 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 is everybody talking about so the Niners doing well? Yeah, Purdy, yeah, uh, he's Mister Irrelevant. Like you know, came in third string. Do you know what that is, Hal? What? Mr. Irrelevant? No. Okay, so Mr. Irrelevant is a nickname for the very last person drafted in the draft. Yeah. So he's like like number 200 and something, right? Yeah. So basically last he's round. He's insignificant. He just, yeah. he just happened to be there. Basically. So and, yeah. and, and, <laughs> Exactly. Well, and so you know this, okay? So when you look in history, I don't know if you know this, Justin, if you look up in history, like, you know, who were the most, you know, prominent, like Mr. Irrelevant, like what uh -huh. happened? What, what did, they, did they ever get? What are the, like, it's a guy who got to like play in a game. Or he got he one yeah. one Mister Irrelevant started wow. for one game. Seriously, no, like none Not, of them started, bro. That is the most the most wow. prominent Mister Irrelevant before Pur Purdy or Purdy, however you say his last name. Uh -huh. Before him was like getting to start. There's nobody you've ever heard of. That's, they, that's why they got the nickname Mister Irrelevant is because nobody has ever I mean, done anything from that position. He was a four year starter in college, so I mean, I it, him having that kind of experience definitely plays. So, in, this, but. so Brock Purdy is the best Mister Irrelevant of all. So time. is he kicking yeah. ass? What's going yeah. on? Oh, he's yeah, yeah he's, he's a winning. stud. He's so this. composed out there. Look at so there's a kicker named Ryan. That's that was the one before. The one before, yeah. Suck up. Yeah, what a suck. Look at yeah. he's the most decorated because what did he get to do? He got to play. He got to. Uh, he was a kicker. And he got to, I think, wow. I think he went to like, uh, maybe like a one. Wow. I did not know that. That's even more awesome. That's what's wild. So yeah. he's already, so, I mean, his, and his first, they had a playoff game Who's, this weekend. He, he I heard even, yeah, he might've even broken a few records of like, uh, highest, Montana most, most, most touchdowns Brady. by a rookie in a playoff game. Yeah. 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 No, he's already, yeah, no, he's sick. So yeah, yeah, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm just I'm like his total anti Niner weapons. guy, but I am somewhat rooting <laughs> for you guys right now. It's just a great story. If that's such a cool it story is. to see to see him playing. Okay, that well. so I got something for you, you guys in your sports. So <laughs> I used you to got watch, it started, bro. I used to watch uh, NFL films as a kid. There was a second there where I was into, into football. One of the greatest kickers of all time, Tom Dempsey. Do you guys know who that was? Okay, no. He was the guy, I think he played Oh, for the, the foot? The shoeless? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. he had half a foot. A half a foot. That's what he, he had like a club yeah, foot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You guys ever hear about this guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. I think he played for the Packers and at one point had the farthest uh kick the farthest. Well, yeah, because like a time. like a like a nub, dude. Like a He had a weird shoe. Cause Did you see this guy? Wait, is is this the one they called Shoeless Joe? No, so there's Shoeless Joe, and then there's that's who I originally. Somebody yeah. kick without a shoe? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. So there's cool stuff like Dempsey? that. Dempsey? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah he had half a foot. 
and he ended up becoming one of the greatest. Yeah, because like a club, wow. though, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah, but still, that's amazing. Because the kicker kicks with the the shoelaces, right? So he hits the the, the top right there. Yeah, the which top nothing. Part, but... Look at his shoe. Yeah, yeah. And he was wow. one of the greatest kickers wow. of all time. It's like a sledgehammer, though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> it's like somewhat of an advantage. Yeah, but talk was, about what... It, so I, I was just thinking about it. This Don't ask me why I think about random shit, but I was just thinking about this. I'm like, what a story. He's born with a club foot. Yeah. The last thing on earth anybody will ever tell you with a club foot is you're going to become a champion a kicker. kicker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And well, what does he I end know, up doing? Stud. He yeah. plays for the NFL and yeah. becomes one of the most decorated kickers of that's all time. That's what makes sports so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Sports well, that's always, life. That's, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's what makes life I so amazing. I absolutely agree. I you know? Abs I, absolutely I love agree. pointing yeah. stuff out to like that to my kids because uh, I, I think especially these days, people are so, there's this weird like, you know, I can't do anything with this or. Woe is me. Yeah. You know, type of deal. But then it's also combined with this. I could be whatever the hell I want, but I don't can't work for. I don't have to work for it. Type of. It's a weird mentality that you're seeing in the, in the youth these days. Yeah. And it's like, no, you can't be whatever you want. However, you can do a lot. You just gonna have to bust your hey, ass. Hey, speaking your ass of off the youth, shit. speaking of the youth, I believe that I, you know, uh, said this that we would see the generation coming up will start. You to did call this naturally start to titrate themselves and stuff like that. So, you know, what's becoming very trendy with Gen Z right now. I just saw this. Are flip phones. Like no 90 way. style. Yep. Call 90 style, style flip phones. Yes. And Ooh, to, to kind of titrate their social media use and being addicted to the phone. So that, so it's becoming like a yep. cool thing to actually, and sure as shit, you watch a couple cool kids pick up a trend like that and they start, and it'll change the way these kids use their phones and stuff. And so. they're cheap phones. You buy them at Walmart yeah. and they're calling them like matrix style phones. Remember the matrix with like, and the yeah. bottom comes out or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I love the flip phone, by the way. I so did I, was, I, I, I. Do you guys remember <laughs> texting though on those things? Oh, yeah. That part <laughs> sucked. <laughs> but I mean, that's okay. Yeah. That's such a cool positive sign, right? We've highlighted a lot of the stuff that's like, yeah. you know, scary and negative and bad. I mean, yeah. it's this is this is the neat part about how fast information can travel like this is because here you have this new generation coming up that are becoming more and more aware of all the negative effects of social media yeah. and being on your phone all the time. And so it's slowly starting to fall out of favor. And then you're seeing a new generation come up of people being like, oh, Hey, you know great. what? I'm not going to be on my phone all day. I'm yep. going to get a flip phone. Like, so totally. I, was, I hope that spreads, man. That so really do I. I. So along those lines, I was reading some, uh, some very interesting t statistics this weekend in regards to, Divorce. So there's some good news, and that's that the divorce rate has been falling, slowly falling since the 1980s. So it kind of peaked there for a second, and now it's starting to come down. And so I, this got me down a rabbit hole of like, why is it falling? Like, what's going on? Like, what's the deal? And I, again, I read some interesting stats. One of them, one of the theories is that the, one of the reasons why divorce rates got so high to begin with is that, that marriage the idea of marriage shifted from this is my life partner we're going to do life together and it's, we're going to raise kids and work and it's going to be hard. And, you know, we're just going to stick together Two, I'm going to marry someone who's going to fulfill me and bring me happiness all the time. And they said that that was a losing strategy because no person is going to fulfill you and no person is going to make you happy all the time. So that switch they think is one of the reasons why divorce rates started going through the, through the roof is that people thought, and I don't know this either. This is true. Now 80% of divorces are initiated by women. Hmm vast majority of which are not abused. A lot of people say, oh, it's physical abuse, stuff like that. It's not true. Most of them divorce their husbands because they're like, I'm unhappy. And they believe that being a single mom is going to make them happier. And a lot of these articles I'm reading are like, it's false. They're not happier. And the kids are worse off. And then some along those lines, this is unpopular, but true that children with a present but not so great dad, now I'm, I'm going to cut out like abusive, like really abusive, shitty, you know, right. or drug addicts, stuff like that. But present but not so great dads, kids turn out better than not having a father at all. And so there's a lot of these divorces that are happening or that were happening because people, and in this case, like I said, a majority of them were, were women, believe he's not making me happy. I'm not fulfilled. I'm going to be happier if I leave him mm -hmm. and my kids will be better off. And it's like, interesting. No, Doug, it's not true. Whatsoever. Doug just pulled the stat up and it's a 70%. Um, but it says that also so I read college, so 80% I got was from the CDC. So, so I, so college educated American women too, who initiate the divorce is even higher. Yeah. Interesting. Because again, they, that they're, I don't belief, need a man. Say what? I don't need a man. I mean, that's like a, that's they're they're told I don't need a man, and they're told. But then again, they're also told when you're married that you're you'll be fulfilled, and happy, and in love, 
and this person doesn't do that it's for the other you. person's responsibility to provide all those things. Yes. I mean, I, my, so my personal experience, like, you know, growing up and trying to understand marriage and love, like, and I, I think I, my, my personal belief is that it's less a man, woman thing. And it's our, our, our thoughts and beliefs around, uh, going into a marriage and a partnership and then also love. So for the, for the longest time, um, I understood love differently than what I understand it today. Like, so I think I, I like many people were sold on the, you know, Oh, you fall in love. You're going to meet someone. You'll know, you'll know, you'll, you'll know when you meet them. And the feeling and, is everything. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, this, and it's this overwhelming feeling that nobody can describe. It's the Prince Charming kind of. You'll just know, narrative. you'll know, you'll know when it happens. And so waiting for this moment of this overwhelming feeling for so long, when in reality, it's a choice, it's an action, it's something that we choose to do. And really, when you think about partnering up with somebody for the rest of your life, probably a good idea to really weigh out all the things we have in common, we don't have in common. Do I, could I see this person as a good teammate uh, in this journey in, in life? And then when I decide, yes, checks all the boxes, we get along with this, we see we our our morals and values are aligned. Like I just I see I see all they're growth minded, all these they check all the boxes. Okay, now I'm going to actively choose to love you for the rest of my life, which mm -hmm. means it's through work. action. Yeah, through work, through yeah. effort towards continually to to try and you know nurture this relationship versus I have this crazy feeling that I just want to be with you every moment and I'm yeah. so infatuated with you and love you so much. This must be love. And you also I, have a parachute anytime anything goes wrong. Like, I'm out of here. Yep. There's that thought, yeah. right? Like, it's really, I mean, it's or, really the, or the belief that it's 50 50. It's not. Sometimes it's 70 30. Sometimes it's 80 20. Sometimes you're putting in way more work than the other person. I had a client yep. who was married to her husband. They had, they had celebrated their 60 year anniversary. So she was in her late 80s. And I would ask her questions about this all the time. Like, what's this like? like and she she was so wise and she, she communicated so honestly. And she goes, Sal, she goes, you go through periods where you don't like each other. Mm -hmm. You go through periods where you're doing all the work and they're not doing any of the work. And then it flips. You go through deaths. You go through the loss of jobs. You go through illnesses. She goes, if you think you're going to be happy that entire time, she goes, you're crazy. Yeah. It's impossible. She goes, that's not how it works. She goes, you, but every time you go through these challenges, every time you go through these seasons, which can last years, she's like, you can go years and have challenges with your spouse. And then you come out of it. She goes, and you're stronger. She goes, and boy, she goes, there were times when we were so close to not making it. But she goes, I look back and she goes, it's the greatest thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. So, and it was very wise. Is it easy? It's not. Growth is never easy. And those challenges can take a long time. But when you sign up for the rest of your life, what do you think you're signing up for? Yeah. So I, I also think that this is becoming a, a bigger conversation today. I think it needs to continue to go that way. But again, I have hope that the generation coming up, boy, I, maybe we'll you know, revere marriage as mm -hmm. just uh, hold it to a higher standard than what we currently do right now. I think that, that yeah. we, we are- Some traditions work for a reason. Well, yeah, no. I mean, it's. Do you it's, know what the divorce rate is with with uh, arranged marriages? I brought this up. Freaking oh, super low, bro. It's like four yep. percent. Super low, like ninety plus percent. Freaking successful. Yeah, it's not about the whole falling. When I'm falling in love, I don't want to over like overlook that. It's a great feeling. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's one of the most wonderful feelings. It's not a permanent thing, though. After that, you you bond, which is much more solid, much stronger, and much deeper. But we fall. We 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 obsess over the feeling and the media paints it as this thing. And what do you see in the, in, in the media? Like, Oh, husband and wife together. Oh, they're unhappy because why? Because the spark is lost. I mean, you know, how many, how many times say that? Oh, people say that, Oh, we got divorced. We lost the spark. That's mm -hmm. why you got divorced. No, yeah. because you lost the spark. What are you looking for? Yeah. That, you know? And work. again, the myth that you'll be happier, especially when you have children that you'll be happier raising your kids uh, on your own or that it's going to be easier. I'm, I'm divorced and it's more work being divorced trying to be involved with my kids than it was when okay. I was married. So I, gotta, so I saw you tweeted that. Did you? Uh, I'm yeah, getting some heat. I bet you are. Yeah, Because, you know, there, I, so, uh, you know, I'm going to defend the people that are probably, you know, snarling at you right now. Uh, because there, there, there is a point, you know, there I grew, I, I grew, I grew, I grew up in a house where I wish my mother would have divorced my stepfather, yeah, yeah. you know, a decade sooner than what she did. Right. Um, and I think she did more damage 
to the relationship with her children uh, than she uh, would have had she got rid of him. There's a there's a, a there's many decades where I was mm -hmm. still holding on to animosity and resentment towards her for making us go through that with her because she selfishly chose to keep this man around and not choose to keep him around because it was better for the family unit, but better for herself right. because she didn't want to be alone and she didn't want to go do that. She didn't want to do life without having a partner. So there are situations where I think a relationship is so unhealthy. hundred percent. Yeah. That I agree. hundred percent. Yeah. There's examples that it that. needs that it, that it needs to end. And so, understand. but if you look at the data, the majority are not that. No, I agree with that's you. That's what, what I'm, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's not the, you know, what do they say to divorce now? It's like 40% of all marriages or something like that now end. And divorce, something, something along those lines. The majority of those are not that. The majority of those are what I said. And, mm. and they know because the data is there because when you file for divorce, you have to tell the reason and what's going on. And that's what it turns out to be. And then the, and then the kids typically lose somewhat of a relationship with both parents if both parents are involved because you do the dual custody. Or what's more common is they lose somewhat of a relationship with the dad because the dad either bounces or does the every other weekend thing, or here's another thing that's quite common. And I know, and you know, you, you talk to any divorce attorney, uh, they'll tell you this. Sometimes uh, mom makes it really tough uh, for dad to be involved. They add, they, they make it even more challenging and the kids don't do better that way. They do, they do worse oftentimes. So that's, you know, that's, that's, that's what's interesting. Now, how do you, about, you, now how do you, you personally um, reconcile this? Because you, you, you weren't in a, abusive toxic type of marriage and you went the opposite you went without the going into too much detail because uh just out of respect for um you know my my ex-wife and my kids um it was definitely we were definitely in a position where it was too far gone so that i'll, I'll leave it at that because again out of respect for them i won't i'll never go into detail well i mean that tells you i mean i'm not asking you to do that yeah. i think that's why i asked like obviously if you, it was if you're researching on. i know how your brain works yeah. if you're researching this you're diving on this i know there's a lot of you that's processing okay my own situation right, right. and going you know looking back and knowing the challenges of what it's been like to go through a divorce like would, would the the more wiser older self of yours go back and advise yourself who went through that process say seven years you ago know i can it, that's such a weird question because you know people always ask that like if you could go back in time no because i wouldn't be where i'm at now and where i'm at now is very happy right. and yeah. you know i have jessica and we have two children together and i'm very very happy um, so that's a hard one, right? Like, could you, would, would you go back in time and, you know, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think it's, I think it's fair. Everything to, happens, I guess, the way it's I mean, supposed I think to. it's fair to be able to play both. I mean, be able to say both, right? It's okay. I to, could say this. I was young and I was totally naive. I was not, you know, yeah. I didn't understand, you know, things the way I do now. Yeah. That might be the biggest challenge with getting married young. Although I'll say this culturally, we don't learn this like we used to culturally and societally marriage is painted to us in a unfair way and we tend to be set up for failure because of the way we think it's supposed to be you know versus uh you know culturally and societally people understanding what well, this is what it's like this is what it, this is what you're going these are the challenges that you're going to meet and this is what to expect and i think that that would help people quite a bit do you think we have the worst culture around marriage out of all the like different cultures oh. I mean, would you would you say that? Statistically, Doug, you've been around in other other cultures mm. like that. Would you, you would, do you have an opinion on that? Well, I definitely know our divorce rate is up there. Um, I yeah, mean, I look at the Japanese culture, which I have more familiarity with. They're more in in it for the long haul, even if they don't have a great relationship. You yeah. know, so mm -hmm. I can't speak to all other cultures, though. Yeah, with, with respect to that. Yeah, I would say um, newer cultures tend to be worse about it than older cultures because older cultures what follows along is wisdom, not saying that they shouldn't change a few things. Cause there's, there's things that need to be changed and, you know, that become outdated, but, um, older cultures tend to have better, uh, I guess, better attitudes around marriage and what that's supposed to be in the family typically. Uh, but again, there's along with that sometimes comes, uh, mistreatment of women or really, really rigid, you know, gender roles, which can be not so great, um, especially for women or children. 
But uh, I think there's some wisdom there that we can't throw everything away. Can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You got to look at it and say, okay, well, what what about this is true? Right. And what can we learn from this? Extract yeah, the benefits and yeah. uh, really like, you know, peer into that. I have a bit of a rant. I didn't know how to transition into this at all <laughs> uh, after a marriage conversation. But um, it, so I finally figured out uh, basically, you know how we go from crazy amounts of rain and just just floods and and like the most water we've ever seen here to then dry dams and then all of a sudden we're in a drought again. You know oh, why that is? This is all man. It's our own. Pro- we have not set ourselves up to store any of this water. No, we have. We can. There's there's an actual like uh, environmental uh, thing that's blocking us. Policy yeah. over a a two inch smelt fish. Yeah. What. Yes. So it's to protect a, a certain fish. They will not allow us to store in, uh, rainwater to its capacity. You know how much of this rainwater we just saw? We just had record water here record. in California. Yeah. Out to the ocean. Yeah. Gone. So they said 94% right now of all of this water is just made its way into the ocean. Yeah. So we'll have, well, this is one of the reasons why California this is a Gavin perpetual Gavin policy, dude. This is why I <laughs> hammer that fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> this okay, is so another it's one not just his. It's been policies for it's decades. It's been before, yeah. but he's- Signed off on it. Okay, so then, okay, so why? I know you say because the fish, but let's follow the money or follow the reason. There's got to be a reason that. Oh, you want to do this? Oh, you. I do want to do this because it doesn't make sense. Conspiracy land when you go that direction. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, if we solve our drought issue, you now have gotten rid of. How do they a have very, a grasp and a chokehold on that, us? Yeah, you, you have lost a very powerful political. Yes. wedge that you can use as a politician. Yes. If you solve an issue like that, you can't keep using the drought. You can't mm. keep talking climate change. You can't keep talking so, any of this stuff because we've solved it. And it's an easy solution. It's yeah. literally stored. Well, this Central is a, Valley politicians have been fighting for Okay, so this is also why I do believe too, because I know everybody, it, I, I think this is very much so less of a left or a right thing and it just a pure government thing that they agree that let's keep this as the argument. Yep. Like that's how I feel about a lot of these massive arguments. A hundred percent agree with you. They they yep. do not necessarily dis- even though they 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 uh they go out there and they campaign as one side or the other. I think yeah. behind closed I doors, think Trump actually was responsible for this specific policy. Uh, I I don't know, like if that's what it said, and then and Gavin Newsom resigned on off on this. So, anyways, this this is a big problem because you see all the reservoirs kind of go down to like nothing, and yeah. it's just it's so wasteful. And we like especially all the water like that gets traveled down to like L.A. and everything from Northern California gets just stripped, and so all the farmlands are are like you know, begging for us to be able to trap this water to be able to like add in the central yeah. Valley. We'd flourish. Like there's just so much benefit to solving this over a two inch fucking fish. Yeah. The irony is, uh, that it actually is killing more than it's saving because we put ourselves in the situation. Then we have to react with policies that are quite damaging. Yeah. It's like the whole, um, forest fire thing. Like let's not go out and clean up all the dead dry wood because we'll kill the small animals. But then what happens is you increase the risk of these huge forest fires, which kill all yeah. the animals. So you got to do yeah risk reward analysis. Yeah. And see I saw how it affects the actual human beings. Yeah. I saw a crazy documentary one time on fires and that the technically the thing that we're supposed to do is just completely leave it all alone. Just let it go. Yeah. Natural burns. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it happens in nature all the time. Yeah. But what they, the, some of the most effective strategies they have are to do controlled burns. Uh, which they don't like. Yeah. They go out there and clean things out, which they don't like. So then we end up with these huge forest fires, which yeah, people live in these places. Where was it? When was it? Was it's that ironic because they'll say something about the CO2 in the environment, but then we just wait till it gets so crazy that it just has a burn for the entire state. What was it two years ago where the skies here were red because of the smoke yeah. from all the fires? And then what was that town that completely lost paradise? Yeah, paradise. Com- my, you know, I have my, a cousin. My grandma that, lived there. I have a, oh, so you have a cousin yeah, who lived she, there. Her whole house burned from Completely there. lost the whole city. So anyway, along those lines, those tragic lines. So we have a... Um, Actually, a, a longtime fan, Hillary, and I just wanted to kind of give her, <laughs> okay. give her a shout Justin's out. Justin's going hard. <laughs> yeah, dude, because she, like, uh, so she lives near me, like, in Felton, and you guys saw some of those videos of, like, the flooding and everything. Yeah. So she's right next to, like, the river there, and it literally just decimated her entire, like, uh, bottom oh. floor of her house. I'd, we'll show the video. 
Uh, but just wanted to give her some love and, and uh, I think she's on the forum. If not, I'll make sure she gets in the forum if you guys want to reach oh. out and do anything. Oh, I know her. who you're talking yeah, about. You know she is. Yeah, she, she came to a couple she came live events. Event. Oh, yeah. that sucks. She's a sweetheart, but yeah, so oh, I, I felt bad. terrible for her. Yeah, that's terrible. But. Hey, I uh, I just read a study on testosterone. I love it when they fund studies that. You're like, why are they giving money to this kind of stuff? It's like the, uh, the, the sky is blue type of yeah, deal. Yeah, dude. They took a bunch of young men who were healthy. So they were all healthy young men. And they gave half of them a bunch of testosterone. They rubbed testosterone cream on, on them. And it made them more sexually impulsive. No kidding. Yeah, so everybody was, <laughs> everybody was like, whoa, it looks uh, like testosterone increases libido and sexual never impulsivity. That. No shit. Yeah, yes. I know. Yeah. But the way they did the test was weird. They had them do a questionnaire, and with each question, there was a picture that was kind of fuzzy. And if you waited, then it would show the full picture, and it was like nudes. So if you waited a second, you saw the full picture. If you waited three seconds, then you saw something else with the picture. The guys on testosterone just waited a second and wanted to get to the next one. <laughs> the guys not on testosterone waited the full... <laughs> How do they design these? I know, these I always think that's what I think is fascinating is how we decide. Like this mean this means this. Yeah, so if you do this, this means I you're know. super impulsive, right? Super funny. Oh, anyway, yeah. I mean to ask you, uh, Adam, in yeah. the in our new property over over there in uh, Park City, did we get all the Juve lights set up? Yes, there. We've they, had renters come in. Yeah, no, we're on like I mean, our we're on, go, we're on right? our third guest, I believe. Doug, correct me if I'm wrong. That we've had to there. My niece was just there, so she was just. In fact, she's there right now. She doesn't leave for another day or two. Um, and I felt so bad that she couldn't, uh, figure out the Wi-Fi situation. And so, um, we finally got online with her and stuff like that. And she, she did the tech free package. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn, yeah. that would be hella frustrating if that happened to me. Totally Luckily she was like, she's like outdoorsy. So she was out doing stuff. So she wasn't even tripping about it, but I'm like, no, this is an issue. I cannot have ever a guest here in that, but she was actually doing the wrong thing. So it was kind of more of a, a, a user error, but the, um, yes, the Juvite is and our audience. We haven't we haven't brought it up since we got going. It's yeah. the only one thing that is not at the house is the the sauna. The sauna is still about a month out. Cold plunge is in there. PRX is completely set up. Juve lights in every single room. Movie theater, steam room, um, heated floor stuff. We got every do time you go there, you get a little cool little package. Do you have from a us. protocol? You're probably I'd say you and Doug are probably the most consistent with the red light. Do you got what's your protocol? First thing in the morning? Like when no, you at to, night. You do yours at night? Mm -hmm. so Before bed. Before bed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't affect your sleep negatively? No, it actually helps my sleep. Really? Yeah. yeah. Now, do you do it what? Full, full, like your face? Oh, yeah. I okay. sit. I have a little chair. I sit right in front of the panel. And you just let it do the same? And yeah. Just let sun shine where the sun don't shine. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a similar... Mine's like, young down there, Justin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> mine's Show a me. similar routine. Mine's not as, uh, as late. So I, when I get home... <laughs> probably around you know five ish or so i probably do my my second shower of the day and you still do that huh two showers every day at least two sometimes three so depending That's on so when weird, i train huh? it'll be three so yeah i just i don't do well being dirty don't you don't really get you don't go outside you don't do anything dirty outside uh, even like just clothes yeah. and sweaty and like i'm what so they call that when you leave some of the seasoning on the pan you know yeah, that, that's yeah. more me <laughs> just as an iron <laughs> skillet yeah i mean i'm like scrub i mean the shit, truth man. is i know it's it's stainless steel healthier from my my skin and what left of hair i have like as far as the oils and the natural yeah. body like you're supposed to do that i know that and i guess you would say when i do shower three times i have like a like scrub myself shower and then i have like a rinse shower wow you do a shower where you scrub the shit out of yourself well like you know with a, i lather up and get really you, soapy. You soap clean. everything up? <laughs> yeah. The whole head to toe? <laughs> head to toe. You're not I supposed see. to do that. I How many loofahs do you own? I'm not a loofah guy. Oh, I'm, bar, I'm a bar soap guy. Oh, you just bar uh, it up? Yeah, yeah, I'm a bar like soap guy. Like you're in guy. prison? Okay. Yeah. So, even, so hold on a second. So you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to put soap all over your body. I've read that. That's really bad for your skin. They say use soap on like armpits. Your bacteria. Your, on your, on your bacteria. butt and on your, your obviously your privates. The areas that, you know, whatever generates pheromones and whatever. But everything else is supposed you to get leave. the most swampy. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Like, yeah, I like to smell good. You just, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah you I'm get in there. In there. In between the toes. <laughs> oh, you know God. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I get it. Yeah, for sure. Jeez. And then afterwards, I go and I sit. Yeah. Go, to, go to Adam's okay. OnlyFans. Yeah. So, Watch him I did. I, I mean, so, okay. <laughs> Yesterday, I got bit by a tick. And this is. Oh, like, no. Dude, the word, like, okay. So did you we, go get treated? No, no, no. So okay. I looked up the protocol and CDC and all that kind of stuff. So it was like, I, I felt like something like pinching. It was annoying. It, it'll relate to your, your shower story, I swear. Um, but it was, so I, I dropped my pants. I'm like, oh my God, uh, go downstairs. Courtney, I got like a tick. And, and 
So she helped me to kind of like pull it out. And thankfully it came right out. It didn't leave its head. It wasn't like struggling. It was like, it just had bit me. Uh, and so I was like, it was, there was some hair on my legs and all this. And I'm just like, no, I got to monitor this thing. So I just started shaving it. And then I was like, well, I'm here, you know, and I just like all oh, did the whole business. Just, yeah. I mean, I'm like a seal right now. dude. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, how was sex last night? Hold on. Uh, <laughs> since we're on it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I fell asleep before that happened. Oh, yeah, Are you sliding around like, oh, in, your, in your pants yeah. right I now? I am slick right now, though. Oh. I'll tell you guys. Hold on a second. Wait, wait. Aren't you, so, aren't you supposed to, if you get bit by a tick, immediately go get, because uh, Lyme treatment works initially. Yeah. After that, you're fucked. Well, so it says that like, um, uh, so I saved it and it was still alive and we put it in a bag and we froze it. So that way, if I have to test it, I can. Uh, and they said, if you have any symptoms within like, I think it was like 72 hours or something that like, you, then you go in and Did you, you get the bullseye mark. Uh, so I have a bruise there from it, but it didn't like swell. Like, um, if it has like that ring and like it has, yeah. has enough time to infect. So it was just the, um, it's got like kind of an anesthesia kind of like venom yeah. initially. So that's what I got. See, Sal, when you don't shower a lot, this type of stuff happens. You, oh, he I felt just, the he felt the pinching. Repelled it off me. It's, it's, it tried to bite into his massive claw. Bro. Could get to the oil. Uh, it's it's creepy the as hell, though. I'll tell you what. Ugh, I hate those. Well, things. bro. Uh, but, okay, but yeah, pay attention because I have a cousin who has Lyme. I know. I, and Lyme is weird. I don't know yeah. if you guys ever read about it. I've had clients that have. I'm it's worried awful. about it still, bro. I'm, it I'm is be weird. It, yeah, it yeah. is weird. Exhausted out of nowhere. Well, so her symptoms were this like suit like. She was so hungry all the time. She said, Sal, it's the most starving I've ever felt 24 seven. She gained like 80 pounds. She's like, it was it's so painful, how hungry I got. Yeah. And then of course the painful, like crushing fatigue. Yeah. Hers like joint mono. hurt. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's like, it, I had clients like almost like narcolepsy. She'd yeah. be like totally in, she'd come in like totally fine. But I knew this, right? So she'd give me, gave me a heads up. And then all of a sudden like how would you work? She'd be like, oh, I gotta lay down. I yeah. I, I'm so yeah, tired right now. Like you're like, yeah. what? But apparently yeah. you can treat it quite effectively if you treat it you immediately. Early. Yeah. But not after. Afterwards, I think the, what do they call them? The bacteria, they call them spirulets. I dude, think. what if you lose your leg? No, Shut we're not gonna up, lose. Dude. Shut oh, up. I don't need it. It'd be so good for. You like, don't need your leg. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just I'll, I'll go. I'll do something in the Olympics. You know what? <laughs> Just is gonna come turn it into you know like, turn yeah. it into a win yeah win some mm. kind of win yeah dude mm. uh, man, well back to the red back to the red it's light to be yeah, I, yeah. my sister started using red light and okay. she, yeah <laughs> back to your family using back to, good, good old family. I got so much family bro <laughs> you know how I, I got commercials for the next commercials 2000 episodes. Is this like fourth generation <laughs> yeah. now we're yeah. talking no. about her she no my sister like, I know people that listen are like god damn how big is Sal's family it's huge it's real big it's massive but but she's been using the red light and she's like dude is a uh, what is she two weeks into it and she she you know sent, I, I i asked her if i could share the picture she said no so sorry i can't show everybody but she did it before and after dramatic difference in two weeks on her face so mm. it's i mean that shit really works yeah no yeah. i i'm i'm pretty good i'm better right now I'm, i mean ever since the whole january and the behaviors thing like i've been i've been better about doing my red light i was already doing the the plunge really well but the the sauna and the red light i've, I've kicked did you up. are you still doing the plunge mm-hmm I did it just the other day again. Did you? Yeah, I tell you what. You so want to know what's funny? I got to tell the audience this. Uh, Adam is hilarious right afterwards. Right afterwards, he's it's like he took cocaine or something. He came in here after doing the plunge, and he's like, <laughs> 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 Dude, I, how long were you in there for? I, I tell you what. So it's, energized. It is. It is. And I, maybe because I've become so um, accustomed to having as much caffeine as i do that i don't feel caffeine like that but it feels like the the biggest shot of adrenaline slash caffeine dose you are I, hyped that's great it, i love it Afterwards. i mean that's it is it it is miserable as fuck to do it every time that's i do why it i can't do it but it it feels amazing afterwards. The thing that's really wild, I was t Kyle and I, because Kyle's been really consistent. So him and I like share notes, like you know how's it been going, how long are you in there for us, and that. When I when I push to like five minutes, it. And I'd like to see the the research on this. I haven't done any digging on this. Maybe you can do since you're more the guy to do this. I if you stay for like five minutes and beyond, it like f gets me cold to the bone. So. Four hours later, You're still cold. I have yeah. like the shit. I'm still sh shaking a little bit. Wow. Yeah. So that's the only. So the, the reason why I don't do it before we podcast is because I've done that. I've already done it once or twice, 
and I, I like, I'm, like, I'm like cold. Chattering. Yeah, while we're yeah. sitting in here, so I'm cold. I don't, I feel like uncomfortably cold just sitting here, not able to warm myself up. Yeah, you up. told me, because yeah. I've only done it like a few times, and I said, How long should I go in there? And you said, What did you tell me? Do what? Two, two minutes minute at least. He's all, Go two minutes at least. This was after I had already done it, and I tried to stay as long as I could, and I did like a minute. Yeah. I'm like, two minutes? <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, I, I believe, yeah. so Huberman is, I've heard him talk about where the kind of threshold is to get like the, the, you know, max benefits. The benefits, yeah. You know, and I, I think it's 12 minutes a week and maybe someone can fact check. No, you're me. right. It's like 12 yeah. minutes or yeah. something like yeah. that, right? So obviously if you're going a minute and a half at a time, you're not going to ever get no. there. So so to get max But you got to work your way up to it. It's an adaptation like anything. So yeah, but here's- I don't know how you do five minutes. Dude, two is the hardest. Once you get beyond two, two to three, three to four, four to five, nothing. Really? Nothing. It hurts. It's yeah, but you can become so numb by two minutes in that oh. first minute to two, the the zero to two minutes. Got to do your Wim Hof breathing. Is the and the breathing is everything. Like yeah. I one hundred percent, like I have my breathing under control from the minute I'm in there, and then once I get acclimated after about a minute and a half, two, I really want to go do that competition with Justin because I feel like I can give him a run for his money. Really? Now. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now that I have the breathing down and get Dude, it, Justin crushed us, and I get the strategy. Yeah, I mean, I haven't done. Yeah, you've been using it quite a bit. I haven't even gone in it yet, so I, I got to step it up. My man. heat tolerance is really good. I could do that for a while. Cold is just oh, that's my nemesis, man. I can't. Do. Speaking of immune system, it's because it's immune boosting. So I got uh, glutathione injectable glutathione through our partners at mphormones.com. Right? <laughs> you got like a full on pharmacy. Oh, injectable glutathione. Wow. Right, and you, you now glutathione is great. You could supplement with it, but it takes a while to build up in your system when you take it as a supplement. Yeah, injectable come you, you right away, and oh, they great. use it for liver detox. They use it for respiratory disease, so all that stuff. All right, yeah. So you guys know how uh, Adam had a cold and he was kind of getting over it, and uh, but you know we we're staying away or whatever. Y was it yesterday? Yesterday in the middle of the night, uh, so the night before, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, God, I think I got. I got his cold for sure. I had it in my throat. I was kind of feeling scratchy. You know that feeling you get when you're starting yep, to get a yep, cold? Yep. I was like, oh man, I was so pissed off. Plus I've been getting cra crappy sleep. So I was like, crap, I had to cancel. I was supposed to go to my parents' house. I had to cancel that because I don't want to get my parents sick. So I got the glutathione, which I saved. And I said, let me, let me, take, let me do this. So I did a shot of the glutathione. That night, gone. Wow. Gone. I don't have it anymore. Cold gone. Nothing. That, that has to be the most effective form to use it, right? Of course, because yeah. it bypasses everything. Yeah, well, and I imagine, because that was one of the biggest factors, too. They said whether or not you were going to do terribly when you got COVID initially. It was like, glutathione. Yeah, the, the, the glutathione deficiency. Yep. So that would be a great no, uh, answer. No, literally that night, so from the morning for sure I had a cold, that night gone. Hmm. Wild. be interesting to test that on somebody who, who has COVID. To give yeah. that to them like like that yeah. right away. What so what do you think? Okay, so you're saying like so you know we had live on right, and so we I was always using the packets. Yep, and that and of course as far as from the supplement standpoint, it's the best, right? So as yeah. far as if you were going to supplement it, yeah, it's liposomal, so you're you're going to raise your glutathione levels by taking it. And yeah. so, but that takes a second, right? Because it's it's got to go through your, yeah, you digestive, your digestive system, track, yeah. yeah. So this is like immediate spike in glutathione. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see a comparison of like the best, you know, basically, <sighs> you know, glutathione supplement on the market compared to taking an injectable. Like, obviously, you know, it's going to hit your system faster. Does it raise it uh, as much or more? Higher. And, yeah. Yeah. But now here's, here's the thing. It's so potent that you can't take it too much. Oh. If you take too much through injectable means, then you can cause po uh, problems. So you have to be very careful. You have to do as they, as they recommend. So it'd probably be smart to take the injection and then supplement after that. Yeah, on a, just on a semi-regular basis. Mm. Um, but now that I have that, I'm like, holy shit, I'll do a couple of those a week. And yeah, uh, I wish I had done that before my trip uh, overseas. You know, that'd yeah. be a great, uh, yeah, preventative measure. Totally. Yeah, I'm gonna order that. But you, I'm just, gonna, I'm just to say, hey, could you when I, because I meet with them this coming week, I get my blood work done, and we'll be like, could you just uh, pretty much give me the stuff that Sal has? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you guys the four one one. Get a fucking box like this. <laughs> Some of the, I mean, it's uh, uh, Sal the, has got all of this. I'll take the Costco yeah. version, please. Yeah, I'm gonna buy a separate yeah. refrigerator. You're gonna have to pay us now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So we usually do the shout outs. I wanted to just like do kind of a funny random one. I don't know if you guys have ever followed this guy. He's the low cost cosplay. I think TH, TH, I think is the end of that. But like he does the most ridiculous 
um, version, like a side by side comparison of like an anime character, and he does it with like bananas. And, like, <laughs> he uses like random stuff this. to like cover on himself. Like, yeah, and, like, cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like or, the like, bizarro you know, version. Yeah, <laughs> you'll draw something on his stomach that you think is the person. And anyways, he's hilarious, dude. Check him out. Oh God. Hey, check this out. We work with a company called Organifi, and their superfood blends make it easy and enjoyable to add more variety and nutrition to your day. One of our favorite products from them is Peak Power. You can use this as a pre-workout. It's got caffeine, but it also has other herbal compounds that improve your clarity, focus, and euphoria. That's right. It makes you feel euphoric. Go check it out. Go check out some of their other products. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A. NIFI.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump for 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Allie from California. Allie, how are you doing? How can we help you? I'm good. Thanks, guys, obviously, in advance. Um, so I wrote in uh, two questions, if it's okay. The first one's on hormonal health. I just recently got my cycle out on my own after not having it probably since I was like 18. I got put on the pill. So I just went off the pill, was working with a nutritional coach, just finally got it. Um, I've had two cycles now, which is awesome. My question is, um, going forward, what do I need to be most concerned about? Is it calorie intake, too much working out? Um, I've had low estrogen my entire life, so that was the main problem. Um, so I just, from here, I don't know if it's the workouts the calories, both of them, stress management, obviously. Uh, all right, I mean, we'll you're hitting them. You're hitting all the things for sure. Yeah, all those things. <laughs> okay. so, 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 first off, um, there's a few things that can affect your fertility. Um, most, uh, I think, most strongly. Right. Uh, number one is too much stress, but okay. too much stress is a is a it's a large bucket. So that could be too much exercise, too much intensity, too little sleep, uh, life stresses. By the way, defining too much, that definition can change as the context of your life changes. So what might have been an appropriate amount of working out before might be too much today or, or vice versa. So you're going to kind of have to gauge how you feel um, based okay. off that. Um, and, then, and then calories. If, you're, if your nutrition, if your calories are too low and you're not getting enough of the essential macronutrients, proteins, and fats, in particular... Um, then your body probably won't want to be fertile because those are essential. So you want to eat enough and you don't want to overtrain. Um, now I'm, okay. looking, I'm looking at your question here and it says that you played soccer for most of your life. Yeah, I played through college. Um, and then I'm a trainer and nutritionist now. I've been out of college for 20 years. So um, yeah, I've been in sports my whole life. So the challenge with someone like you, and I, you know, when I would train somebody who had a pedigree like you when it comes to athletics, the hard thing for them to judge is too much. What is too much intensity? What is too much volume? Um, right. you, you have another gear that you've trained yourself to work with. So it's, it's a lot less than you think, okay? It's a lot less mm -hmm. than you think. The appropriate amount of training with intensity, frequency, volume, um, is less than what you think it is. So you're not playing at a high level anymore. So you have to completely change your mindset around it. So the, the idea is, and you hear Adam say this on the podcast all the time, do the least amount of work to elicit the most amount of change. See how little you can work before you start to see negative effects of not working out enough. Okay. okay. So that's the yeah. goal. The goal is like, okay, well, what if I do three days a week? What if I cut this down? Do I notice any changes? And if you just continue to feel better, then keep moving in that direction until you sit, you start to notice like, oh, I'm getting more out of shape. I'm now I need I, now I think I'm doing too little. So that would be the game that you would want to play. Now it's hard to tell because you have a hoodie on so that, but you look pretty lean to me. And I, I would also add that one of probably the the greatest assaults potentially on your hormone level staying balanced is a low calorie type of diet and also being very lean. Uh, I remember when we that's were, what I was just gonna, that's what I was just going to ask was I don't really weigh myself anymore. Um, I kind of know where I'm at. I'm probably like 115. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know my body fat, but I'm not a big person. <laughs> um, but I don't know going forward, like, can I not 
be a certain weight? Like, do I have to worry about that? Or can I just worry about making sure my calories are okay? Well, okay. So, I mean, they go, hand, they go hand in hand, right? So a little yeah. example of this. So Katrina manages herself relatively lean. And I actually don't even think she, she doesn't look crazy lean at all. Like she doesn't have abs popping and she doesn't try and stay shredded. She just stays pretty lean as a female. And when we were, when we were getting her hormones checked and we were trying to get pregnant, uh, one of the things that she had to do was actually just kind of back off her working out and intentionally eat the gain, which in her head, she was like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm shredded. You know, I don't feel at all right. lean. In fact, she's like, I would, I would much rather be much leaner. I'm not even where I'd like to be. And he, the doctor's telling me I need to put body fat on. Yeah, And she's right. like, you, so, and, and so it was very important that one, she pulled back a little bit on the intensity of her training Two, she intentionally increased her body fat percentage. And that started to balance out and level out her hormones. And, and again, there's going to be this obvious individual variance. And so with someone who's already down to 115, you're probably, I actually would not, I, I would be focused probably a lot on calories and keeping your calories up. I'd want, I'd want you to be more in a bulk mentality right now, since we're, we're really trying to keep that balanced. And then to Sal's kind of point about, you know, the least amount possible. It doesn't mean that we can't in the future have a goal where you say, Hey, Adam, you know, I've got Vegas coming up in summer and could we lean out a little bit before I'd like to. And I wouldn't be against that, but right now, since this is so new to you getting your period back and we're, you're really trying to go from a, a health perspective, you may want to right. start to carry a little bit higher body fat percentage, and and that would support that, in my opinion. Yeah, so just generally right. speaking, a good uh, – go get your body fat tested. So you could use calipers or underwater weighing, Yeah, um, and that'll give you kind of a general idea. If a good balance between lean and um, fertility and health with body fat for women is in the low 20s. So I would aim for like 20, 20 to 23% body fat. Looking yeah. at you now, you're probably in the teens, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I I, yeah. do you have an idea what your body fat's at? Yeah, I'm probably, I would think like, I don't know, maybe 15 or 16. Yeah. yeah. See, that, Katrina was between 13 and 15. That's where she was hovering. Even though she didn't look yeah. it. That's how that was her her measurements, and so she had to put on body fat to get up. Yeah, there. get get your body fat percentage up uh, to like twenty percent, and and you okay. know your estrogen question. By the way, um, being too lean or not having a, a lot of body fat will lower estrogen for a lot of women. Right. That that was her issue was estrogen. Yeah, estrogen. Yeah. Her, her estrogen was low, and that's why we had to get it up was to and increase the body fat percentage. Okay. Yep. Um. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a totally aesthetic question? Sure. <laughs> okay, go for it. Um, so obviously I've played soccer my whole life. Um, the only way for my freaking quads to get smaller is for me to not do anything. <laughs> but that's obviously not health. I mean, I don't think that's healthy either, right? Like I always have a small waist and an upper body, but... And my husband's like, you're like a problem all men want, <laughs> but I hate it. Like, it doesn't matter what I do. They're freaking gigantic. Listen, you can, you can do, you don't actually have to hardcore strength train them. I've actually had, I've had a girlfriend who was like this, uh, who competed and she did very little leg training. And when she did, it was like body weight, walking lunges. And it doesn't mean you can't exercise them so that they're, they're strong and they're stable, but you're probably the type of person who doesn't need to be backloading, you know, 200 pound squats because your legs will, or leg pressing a bunch of weight or doing like that. Like mm -hmm. I might do more stability stuff and multi-planar movements yep. for your legs and body weight exercises. So, so you are staying balanced, stable and, and strong in those areas, but I'm probably not going to load that area, especially considering that I'm also going to be encouraging you to be increase your calories. So you increasing your calories and strength training your legs will probably make them blow up. And so yes. there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, training them just like yeah. one time a week and more body weight type of stuff. You can always pre-exhaust too, if you are doing legs for that day and like focus more on your posterior chain. So, um, you know, okay. do something like hip extension and yeah, like butt, hold, hamstring butt hamstrings, you know, just do that ahead of time and kind of exhaust them going into a compound lift. Yeah, I you know okay. it, it's going to be hard to shrink your quads. Yeah. You, you've got a lot of uh, it's muscle. Hardwired. You've got a lot of muscle fiber yeah. hyperplasia probably that that uh, through the years and years and years of sprinting, and you probably are also genetically gifted with strength in your lower body, which is why you were able to compete at a high level. The hard work plus that plus the sprinting plus the training, you've got like very dense muscle fiber um, you know capacity in your quads, and so to shrink them, you're going to have to atrophy them. 
And so, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can't give you an answer that's going to give you everything you want. Like you can, totally. at, you can atrophy your legs, but now you're losing muscle. Right. The only time they were small is after I had my children because I didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, I would just do like full range of motion stuff. Like I wouldn't start my workouts with anything quad related. If it's all quads that you're worried about, I would go hamstrings, glutes, adductors, abductors, and then I'd finish with like squats or lunges, you know, something okay. along those lines. Um, you know, usually really big quads. If you build your butt and your hamstrings that can change the aesthetic a little bit. But right. yeah, if you want them to shrink, it's like, I mean, I could tell you not to move and not to do anything uh, yeah. for your legs, but that sucks. That's the only time that they go down. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. I appreciate it, you guys. Yep. Yeah. All no right. problem. Hey, do you have any of our programs, by the way? I do. My brother and I, yeah, we actually, we each got it, but we got the bundles over Christmas. Um, and I tell all my clients about you guys. So we love you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. do you have, Thank you for everything. Do you have mass performance? I don't. Oh, okay. No, but, so which phase is it, Justin? That's all like multiplanar, lower second body. Phase. Second phase. Yeah. I'm going to send you mass performance. Look at phase two and look at some okay. of the exercises and lower body movements and mobility movements. And that should give you some, some good ideas for exercises you could do for your lower body. They're great for athletic performance, really great for mobility and movement, but they're not huge. It's not going to make your legs massive. Look, like phase massive one will give okay. you yeah, the yeah. size. Don't do that. Look at phase two. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. You All got right. it. All right. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. To this day, though, for, I mean, always the hardest clients for me to train were ex hardcore athletes. Yeah. It was just well, trying they, to tell them to do less was okay. like, like you, it was impossible. Well, they've been hard it's a mindset. Yeah. They've been hard. Yeah, exactly. They have, they've been hardwired for, you know, decades in, in her case, decades of training a certain way that, you know, her, her level of laying off and low you know, compared to the average person is like the most intense day they would ever experience. Right. So because they're, they have that collegiate level athletes have learned to push through and every, and every level you go up, it gets crazier. Right. So yeah. training like yeah, a high the school, longer you're in it. yeah. Training like a kid or a person who went through high school training consistently. Okay. You have a little bit of athletic mindset and then you get someone who's gone all the way through college and they have an even crazier athlete. Take someone who's gone to the professional yeah. level. And, it's and I wouldn't like, be surprised if she did club after college. And yeah. Really yeah. Play. So unwinding that is, is a challenge. You know, she, her, as far as the hormones thing, this is was Katrina's thing. And it was really, uh, the thing that was probably most challenging for her, because we we see ourselves so different, right? So I'm sure she probably even sees herself this way. She wants to change her body, although she's probably lean in incredible shape. You know, Katrina was just like, I want to be leaner. I'm not. I don't even think I'm that lean. And the doctor's telling me that I need to put on body fat. Yeah. Like you don't want to hear that if you're that person, right? Like she's over here trying to sculpt her body and stuff like that before she gets pregnant. And doctor's going like, Nah, you need to. You need to eat some cheeseburgers and you need to relax a little bit and put some body fat on. And she's like, man, I don't want to do yeah, that. Too, men and women, you will destroy your hormone levels by being too lean. Now, the difference is men are can get much leaner before yeah. that happens. But, you know, men get down below 7 6%. You see their testosterone crash and they start to get hormone problems. And with women, you know, if they walk around in, in the teens of body fat all the time, um, typically you see hormone problems and fertility issues. Well, and the thing that I think is so deceiving about this is how, how we all carry our body fat can look so different on person to person. Like, so it's you, also, you look at social media and all the women on there are presenting physiques that are in the low teens. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're like, Oh, that's, that, that's healthy. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Our next caller is James from Georgia. James, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys. Um, First of all, I just want to echo what everybody else has been saying. Um, you guys are phenomenal, providing like spot on actionable advice that I pretty much can take in and use almost daily. Um, I'm a relatively new listener, so um, I've become a bit of a junkie and I've been listening to you guys for about three or four months now regularly. And I find it the most useful uh, source of information that I have um that i use all the time huge compliment Thanks, thank man. you man no problem in my um to, i also want to preface this by saying that before i get to to the to the big question is that i haven't uh participated in any of the maps programs yet i've been relatively new just kind of sorting through that but um i want to make it through this kind of hump that i'm in right now before i start on anything new so um the short version of my 
I guess my question or my dilemma is that while I've been going through a pretty consistent and successful cycle of um, uh, bulks and cuts for about the past five plus years now, uh, I recently went through an extended uh, surplus where I stayed in the bulk a little bit longer than usual. And um, when I went into my cut, everything just fell apart. Um, I did my cut the way that I would normally do it. Uh, and almost immediately, I had a loss of sleep. I had massive headaches, um, some dizzy spells, which I attribute to the loss of sleep. And um, so I went back into what I thought at the time, or what I think was my pretty close to my maintenance, and did that for a couple of weeks, just kind of see how I felt. I felt fine. So I went back into a cut, not quite as deep as the last one, had the same symptoms. And then just went back into a went back into what I thought at the time was my um, maintenance, and I've stayed there around there pretty accurately. I'm still losing a little bit of weight, but I'm also losing a little bit of strength, and I'm not really sure which way to go. Whether I just want to kind of dive into the cut and see if I can make it through it, or if I should, um, I can't. I can't seem to go any lower than I actually am right now. And still maintain some kind of of strength. My strength starts to deteriorate pretty quickly after I start the even a small cut. All of, and this is the first time this has ever happened. So there's a few. Um, I want to dig a little deeper because I have a few ideas as to what might be going on. Um, what is your? Let's start with this. What's your workout look like? Strength training. Um, very little. Um, it's it's mostly the 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 basic movements: squats, uh, bench press, shoulder press. Um, some dumbbell work with biceps and um, some leg press uh, to kind of to 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 square things out. Um, and how many hiking days a week, and walking. How many days a week do you do you lift, and what's the intensity look like? And then how and then how often do you walk and hike? So uh, for the workouts, it's 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 generally four days one week and maybe five days the next week. The four day week, I tended to be do a little bit heavier and take more rest. The five day week, I tend to just focus on maybe taking it down a little bit and getting it in, getting some some just some exercise in. Okay. Um, the yeah. intensity it depends on what I'm what I'm um, doing that day. So some days I'll push really hard, other days I'll pull back a little bit, okay. kind of like it like a slingshot, you know? Yeah. And these are what one hour workouts? About yeah. Okay. It can then- be forty five minutes. And then when you, when you do your cut, what are you cutting? How many calories? And is this coming from carbs, fats, proteins? It's all coming from carbs and a little bit of fat. Okay. Uh, I, it's about, I take down, what the way that I do it is I start, I, I just drop 500 calories immediately. And I assume based, based on my experience, that will put me at about, um, at about 250, ca- 250 calories under my maintenance. And then I evaluate after two weeks and see where I should go from there. And so it's 500 calorie cut um, well, from, from where you I, were. I draw. Yeah. Where's I want to know the where, where, okay, give me, I want to know your weight right now. How much do you weigh well, and, hold then, on. Let's, and the calorie intake? Well, let's get there because I, I do have, I do want to go a little, cause I think there's, I, I think I might know what's going on and then we'll get into the calories, but you go down 500 calories from where you were mostly from carbs and your symptoms include terrible sleep, headaches, dizziness, uh, just feeling like shit. And I'm going to assume that your diet is mostly whole natural foods. It is 100%. Okay. Well, you're, not 100%, 90, 99%. Your sodium, you need to increase your sodium. Mm. This is where I would start. So when you drop carbs, uh, you lose a lot of water and you probably don't eat a lot of sodium, especially for someone who works out a lot and eats whole natural foods. So if you eat a lot of whole natural foods and you work out a lot, you, number one, don't eat a lot of sodium. Whole natural foods don't contain much sodium. Even if you salt your food, you're not getting much sodium in comparison to heavily processed foods. Then if you work out a lot on top of that, you're sweating quite a bit. And then you drop your carbs, which pulls water out. So people, when they go on a low carb diet and they go, oh, I have the keto flu or I feel like really crappy. A lot of it has to do with their electrolyte imbalance and they need to dramatically increase their sodium. So, and this is something you could try very easily. You could go on a cut and then start supplementing with electrolytes, like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand milligrams of sodium a day on top of your normal diet with your carb cut and see if you notice a difference and you'll notice right away. So if that's the thing, if that's really what's happening and you're starting to feel like crap and then you bump your sodium up the next day, you'll be like, Oh my God, I feel a lot better. 
then that's what it was. If that's not what it was, then it might be that your your calories are just too low and your workouts are just too hard. Uh, and the combination of two is too much. Where's so let's go let's get the calories so that although that's a, what a great what yeah. great insight. Yeah, yeah, you're probably the sodium you're angle. probably spot on with that. But let's where, where are your calories at right now? Right now they're at twenty three hundred. Oh, okay, so and that's it, and that's considered a cut for you. Uh, it's a little bit under my maintenance, so it's not a big cut. It's just a little. I'm according to the scale, I'm losing about like a quarter of a pound a week, which is not where I want to be because my strength is also going down a little bit. Yeah, that's not that's not an unhealthy place at all, though. I just wanted to make sure you weren't doing something extreme with all that exercise. So that Sal's probably right, dude. Especially mm -hmm. if you're a healthy eater and you're and you're eating a lot of whole foods. Have you have you messed with LMNT or Liquid IV or any of those uh, hydration? Nothing like that, I. I no, I haven't at all. I mean, I'm open to all that kind of stuff, but I haven't. I've never really been in a position where I felt like I needed it, or and I've. It seems like maybe over the last three or four months, I've kind of entered a different, a different territory now in my workouts and and my training. So, it's a mm -hmm. game changer yeah. for people in low carb diets, people who eat paleo, and people who eat a whole food based diet. It's who a also performance exercise. enhancement for sure. Makes a huge difference, and it's more than you think. You need more than you think. So when you look at people who are like, oh, I, I got to make sure I watch my sodium or whatever, it's because they eat a lot of heavily processed foods, they're inactive, and they're out of shape. You look at athletes who exercise quite a bit, eat whole natural foods, you have to supplement with sodium. You have to actually put sodium in your water and make sure you get enough sodium. So when you cut your carbs, you probably immediately lose water weight, right? When you cut your carbs down low, you probably already drop, like you get that initial kind of weight loss, then it kind of stabilizes. Okay. Try, just literally try this, try increasing your sodium by a couple thousand milligrams. So LMNT is a company we work with and it's really easy because you just add a packet to water and each packet is a thousand milligrams. So I would do two throughout the day. Not on, a sugar in there. Either. No sugar, nothing. It's just, it's sodium, uh, magnesium, potassium, but it's high in sodium. And you just add two of them a day on top of your normal food. You'll notice within a day if that was the problem, like literally within a day, you'll be like, maybe even in that moment, I've had clients where this was an issue. And, and the, the tells for me are the sleep headaches and the, and the dizziness. Those are all signs of your electrolyte your and, electrolyte energy, and energy. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, he, yeah. he, those are all signs of like dehydration. So like you could totally be going through that too, which you may not think yeah, you are because sounds... you drink the same kind of water. But if your body's not hanging on to that because your sodium's so low, so I, that's the two things I'd focus on is the water intake and then and the sodium intake and see how you feel. I think that was uh, spot on because your calories are you're not in an unhealthy place. No, and your workout sounds okay. I mean, based on just how you're explaining it, you know mm -hmm. how you pull back and then you increase in. You sound like you kind of know what you're doing. You know your body a bit. Sounds like you've been working out for a little while. Um, and and when you go and you feel good until you go into this cut. And a majority of the calories are coming from carbs that you're cutting. And it's like you immediately are exhibiting symptoms of somebody who has an electrolyte imbalance, which is very common when somebody goes into a low carb environment. It's very common. And they're a healthy eater. And they're healthy. Yeah. Right. Now, if you go low carb, but the, you know, the rest of the food you're eating is like bacon, burgers, hot dogs, you know, how people do these low carb, you know, kind of keto diets and they eat a bunch of processed meats. They don't notice these symptoms because their sodium is high. They're eating burgers, hot dogs, and bacon. Mm -hmm. But if your if your diet is whole natural foods, lots of unprocessed things, you know, you're eating things like, you know, red meat and ground beef chicken, and chicken, and turkey, turkey, fish, yeah. uh, eggs, you know, it's uh it's it's I'm gonna guess it's sodium. And by the way, you might even notice in the moment. I've had clients like this where literally we give them sodium and Thirty minutes later, oh, in the like, I think you'll notice in the workout yeah, the first time you do it. Yeah, yeah. If it's that, you'll. You, I think you'll notice. For you'll sure notice right the, away the first day. It's not like you'll have to try it for a few weeks to see if it works. You'll know within days if this is this is the deal. All right, um, great. I have I have avoided electrolytes. I don't know why. Just pretty much thought. Why would anybody pay extra for that stuff? <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, you could salt but, it yourself. Uh, it's not the uh, the LMT no, things now. Yeah, but. I, I need I need something that, that, that I need something that will actually like portion it out for me. And, yeah, that's so, I think I think that's why we like it. So of, much. of all the supplements that exist on the market, okay. Now I know electrolytes are like silly. Oh, salt, potassium, magnesium. They've been around forever. Of all the supplements that exist on the market, the most va some of the most valuable supplements for hardworking athletes are electrolytes and sodium. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and creatine, like the cheapest. The three, yeah, the three most basic cheap ones are, are like some of the most valuable. I've had there. endurance athletes where I have them add a pinch of salt to their water while they're running and throughout the day, and they come to me and they're like, "I feel like I'm taking steroids. What did you give me?" And I'm like, "You were so depleted. Your sodium is so low. 
you needed that for performance. So, and I, like I said, it's an easy test. Test it out for yourself. You'll know within a day or two if that's the deal. All right. Well, fantastic. I trust you guys completely. So um, awesome. Yep. You got it, man. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work. In which case I would say adjust your intensity and don't go on such an aggressive cut. Although 500 calories is not that aggressive, not that but I would crazy. bet, I mean, I would bet money that it's sodium. Yeah. That's, that's how, that's how positive I am. Circle back and let us know. Uh, I'll have, you know, it, let, let's set you up with uh, maps anabolic. Yeah, what do you anabolic. say? Start, start them off on maps anabolic. I want him in the forum too. I want you to, I want to follow up. I'm excited to see how this feels for you when you bump your sodium by a couple thousand milligrams. And if you know, you'll notice, like I said, right away. So we'll put you in the forum and then, you know, let us know. Let us know what happened. Will do. Thank you guys very much. You awesome, got it. James. All right, man. What a great call, dude. Yeah. You yeah. know what? A, what a great, like, so, so, and you're so right. All those yeah, symptoms like, is like weird, those dehydration. Symptoms, but that makes like, perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and you know I what he said? from dehydration. 99% Easy. whole food guy. Yeah. Like yeah. That, that's when you know for sure. Like if he was like, oh yeah, I'm kind of, I eat pretty healthy, but I eat out a lot. Like, okay. So you're probably okay. Yeah. So he anymore. looked fit and everything. And what he's talking about his workouts was pretty, you know, spot on. So I, yeah, I, I imagine that was it. Sodium's it essential. Like it. If it's too low for what you're doing, you're going to feel like dog shit. Yeah, well, that's a fact. Th so. This is the part that I, yeah, I actually love conversations food. like this because it uh, highlights like and it, it reminds me of my experience, too, of like supplementing with magnesium. It's like these things that have been around forever. Yeah, you no, take it for granted. Yeah, you take it for granted that it's like no big deal. And then it ends up being like this life changing yeah. supplement you take for you. It's so cheap. It's so basic. And we, we get so hung up on the performance ones, right? Like the latest and greatest of this. Know, right? like, <laughs> and it's like, bro, if your sodium's low or your magnesium's well, it only low- only makes sense if you're super dialed though. You know? right. And I think that's why we avoid that. Like, I don't know, recommending it all the time. Because it's like, you got to be like, everything's got to be in place, the whole foods. And also you got to be working out and like consistently and being, you know, the intensity has to be at a certain level. But when it's there, man, it is life changing. Dude, for me, sodium is, a, is a, such a performance. Because I don't eat a lot of carbs well, yeah, anyway. you eat so lean dude i don't healthy. eat a lot of carbs because it just doesn't work with my gut health so for me a high carb day is like 150 Dang. 200 grams which is not a lot i work out most days so i drink i, I do yeah. at least two to three uh, sometimes four lmnt packets wow, a day you go four sometimes but hey but you know what i feel and, and look i i get blood to my my blood pressures and everything's always healthy and amazing i feel so much better when i do two to three packets a day versus yeah. when i don't it's a, yeah, it's a huge difference same. Our next caller is Val from Hawaii. Val, how can we help you? Hey, guys. It's so good to see you and talk to you. How you doing? Uh, I'm good. This morning felt like Christmas morning, like a little kid, super excited to get up. So. Uh, right. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Sal Santa yeah. Claus sometimes. So. Yeah. That, that, is <laughs> nick, that is a nickname. Stop. That is a nickname. Sal's a Claus. That yeah. is a nickname. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to ask why. Let's, hear, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's hear it, Val. What you got for us? Yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm going to stick to the script, like Doug said. So my first question is, um, I've actually become alcohol-free. Today is four months exactly. And I felt that once I did this, the weight would like easily and naturally drop off, but it hasn't. Mainly in my midsection, and I've noticed my arms are like waving a lot more, and my thighs are widening. So I guess I'm trying to figure out how to adjust my overall routine. Now that I'm 41, um, I know I need to make some changes. I just, I don't know what I'm missing. I don't, I can't pinpoint what I need to change, but I feel like I'm really tuned in to myself. So I just thought it'd be really cool to get you guys' perspective on that. Val, I have some, I have some questions. What, real quick, what is your skincare protocol? You look amazing. You said you were 41? Yeah, I'm 41. Yeah. Um, actually... I am a licensed esthetician. Okay, uh, that makes uh, sense. Uh, you have, you, you, yeah, you look, you look like you're 10, 12 years yeah. younger. All right, sorry. Thank you. You're doing Thank a good you. job there. Um, doing a good job there. Thank you. <laughs> well, my protocol is less is more. That's why I teach all my clients. So I do like a freshwater rinse in the morning and then moisturize. And then at night, I usually do a, a good cleanse or a scrub and moisturize. So just moisturize is really like, where it's at and hey, you guys are doing that so. we did we figured yeah. that out late in life so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Doug, a year ago I'm not, I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet, but Doug I'll, was I'll hiding that up. from us for a while he was on it. he was on it earlier we, yeah. we figured it out just now so you know so Val yeah. to, to give a little background because you gave us uh, a little bit more background in your question uh, you said you were 41 you've been an athlete since you were four you started training around 13 14 so you have experience you were in the Navy 
uh, for a while, um, and you were a, a, a the diver. seventh female diver in the U.S. Navy. Wow, you're a badass. Okay, Whoa. so that's cool. So you have right you have a long history of fitness and exercise and all that stuff. So that's important to know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so would you, would you mind if I get a little deeper into why you stopped drinking alcohol? No, not at all. I actually really enjoy talking about it. Um, I over the years used it as fun and a social, you know, a social thing. And then it just kind of gradually developed into something different. And my last two years of my drinking career, I noticed a lot of changes. Like my thoughts were getting a little bit darker, the weight gain, the sleep, it just developed into this really bad relationship. And I just always was sober curious. And last year I was just like, I'm doing this. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to commit to it and at least take a year and, and face, this was the biggest thing for me. I knew I had to face a bunch of trauma and I knew I couldn't do that with alcohol in my life. Mm. So I was like, let me get rid of this. Let me face my shit and start to heal myself. And so that's what I've been doing over the last four months with morning routine, prayer, mm -hmm. reading. I've just, you know, I've dove into it with therapy and all kinds of things. And I feel like a new person. Good Val, for you. Val, you, you that's okay. awesome. Okay. Yeah. You, you, I, uh, I'm so glad you have the courage to go into that. So you got to have a little bit of patience because here's what typically happens when somebody gets rid of a, a coping mechanism for trauma or challenge, and oftentimes it's, some, it's something that someone's using to self-medicate, either to distract themselves uh, or to make themselves feel better. And alcohol in the short term is a very effective way to distract yourself, uh, make you feel better, whatever. What happens when you take one thing away is that what we tend to do is replace it with something else. And in this case, you're probably replacing it with something that's a lot healthier than the alcohol was. Now, that may be food, and you may not be realizing that it's food. So what you may be doing is you may be eating more than you might have been eating before because now you've removed the alcohol. So although you've cut the calories from the alcohol, you've either replaced it or started or maybe even eating a little more from food because food also, food is the most abused substance in modern societies, okay? And it's, it's, it's abused because the, the negative effects are not, so, not as pronounced as things like alcohol. It doesn't tend to destroy families and that kind of stuff. So I think it's a good trade. The reason why I said to you, be patient, is because you're four months in, and it's going to take a little bit of time for you to get to the point where you don't need to self-medicate with other things. Now, I will give you some other options that you may want to use when you feel the urge to eat more or maybe use food as, as, a, as a substitute. I would ask you to use things like activity, and maybe meditation. Now, mm. the problem with, with activity and meditation is- Does it taste good? We, yeah, and activity, <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> activity can, activity mm. can be distracting, so that can be distracting like food. Meditation is not distracting at all. It actually puts you in where you're at and you kind of have to look at things. So I would, I would, you said you're working with a therapist. I would, add, I would tell the therapist this and say, look, I, I cut alcohol out. I notice I'm gaining a little weight. I think I may be eating more as kind of a substitute and then work with them because that's going to help you solve the root. Because I could give you the typical advice we give on the podcast with macros, cutting calories and that kind of stuff. But then you're still going to be faced with, I got to deal with the stuff and I don't have I, a way to cope. I with have it. something that I think may be useful for you, especially since you seem like a, a very self-aware person. Like, uh, I, have, have you experimented with fasting much? Yes. It's funny you say that, Adam, because I have been on the intermittent fasting train before it was even a train. And um, I used to do one 24-hour fast a week. And then I would try to roll that into like one 48 or 72-hour fast a month. And I definitely have gotten away from that over the last few years. So that's a good point. Yeah, I, I think the, I think you're a type of person that I think I could introduce. Though you're, obviously, I wouldn't be introducing for the first time. You've you've obviously done this before, but 
you know, especially since we are working on trauma things and stuff like that, also trying to pay attention to maybe I was had some habits of going to the refrigerator more times than I used to by just having a pure fast day like that. I just in and using it as a day of like looking internally. We're not using it to cut calories. We're not trying to use it to like measure it, the success of it by but really since we're talking about trauma, since we're talking about working on ourselves, you're already incorporating meditation, prayer and stuff like that. You know, incorporating a fast, uh, I think, will help you div, and that paired with your counseling and everything that you got going on, I think would you would be somebody that I think could get some value. So, from that. so long as the after fast part doesn't look like a rebound, okay? Right, right. So that's because that that can happen. You'll people will fast, then the day after, it's like you make up, or the two days after. Okay, you could try this, Val. Try, and this takes a little work, but try journaling. And it could be, okay. it could literally be a sentence before you eat, write something in the journal about how you're feeling and about how you, you, you want to actively care for yourself. Okay. So right before you take a bite of anything, what you literally can be one sentence or a paragraph, whatever you feel. And it's gotta be something along the lines of this is how I feel right now. So you got to kind of be in touch with how you feel. And, and I, I, I want to love myself through action you know, add that sentence. So that means that loving yourself, not the feeling, but rather the action. Then after you're done eating, do another entry into your journal and just do that each time. The reason why this works is not necessarily because you're journaling, but rather it's making you pause and making you aware of what's going on. This is harder than it sounds. This is a lot harder than it sounds because if you are indeed using at times food uh, as a distraction, you're not going to want to pause and get out of that state of mind. It's like you don't want to stop. You want to just keep going. Just like out, like when you drank alcohol. Imagine if you had to journal before you had a drink. You'd be like, yeah. fuck it. I'm just going to drink. I don't want to. The power of that, the power, <laughs> of, yeah, the power yeah. of that, the power of that though with a self-aware person is incredible though. Yeah, it's just the doing it that's hard. That's right. Yeah. You, If you go through, and I, I would even like, you know, I'd have like a fast and then the next day, this would be my, okay, I'm focused on the journaling that day because it, it's going to tell you a lot in that day about yourself. And yeah. being a self-aware person like you are, you, mm -hmm. it, I think it'll, it'll be very enlightening at the least for you as far as the behaviors around uh, you're eating and stuff like that. Give, I think those give are, yourself a year. So you're four months in, give yourself uh, you, the, an additional, you know, eight months. It's a full year. Whenever I've ever worked with anybody who's dealt with, you know, quitting cigarettes or alcohol mm -hmm. or any other kind of a challenge, it's taken us a year to come back full circle and almost always they replace it with something else. Yeah. And, and my strategy was always to replace it with something that was healthier. Now anything could be abused, including exercise and meditation. Those things can be abused too, but it was a better alternative. So when I, I used to tell people like who quit cigarettes, I'd say, okay, every time you want to smoke, go for a walk. And then what it would turn into is they were walking all the time and that's okay. But to go from there to, you know, even healthier was easier. So I would give them that substitute. So those are all the lifestyle okay. hacks. What, so what have you done like workout wise in terms of, have you changed up the stimulus at all and like kind of like sought after like an entirely different type of adaptation? No, I, I haven't. I, I've been kind of stuck over the last few years. Just, I go to the gym. Uh, I always have a big focus on legs. So I'm, I was squatting two or three days a week. The first thing I do as soon as I go to the gym is I do pull-ups because um, that's if I don't you know do those I lose them. But I noticed that I have been stuck, and so I did start Maps Fifteen. Mm -hmm. I'm on week three right now, okay. um, and I really like that. I also have Maps Anabolic that I originally bought in 2018 um, and didn't um, fully follow it, so. I think program programming could definitely help. However, I get so frustrated, like trying to follow a program. It's really weird. Because <laughs> um, you're an athlete. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I know it's yeah. good. I'm like, I know I need to do this, but I love to just like cruise the gym, be like, all right, yeah. today I'm doing blah blah blah. I like to just like you know cruise in there and do stuff, but I know it's not beneficial uh, along those lines though and i like where justin's going with this and and what you're sharing right now is you might it, it might do you well to actually and and i don't want to be the one to pick it for pick it for you i want you to yeah. 
you know, come up with like a new Something goal. Something exciting. Yeah, that you're new. Like, and, and, and give you an example. Like, so when when I go through times in my life like this where I'm trying to 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 re spark like my drive in the gym or focus, I'll do something really like it. It's like you know what? I've never like made an attempt to get really mobile or really good at the Turkish get up or something that is like out of the normal for you that you that that's not like your normal routine or training. And because you kind of have that athletic background, what you great know, advice? You know, yeah. get 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 into it. Get competitive with yourself about being good at the yeah. Turkish get up or the windmill or something that's different and unique that takes some practice and mental focus around it. And it also Ooh. feeds into a little bit about what Sal was saying is like, it takes away this, 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 the, the, the reaction to the trauma and doing some other behaviors and it replaces it with this new kind of obsession of, yeah. I'm going to be really good at the snatch. It's you know, a I've positive never done draw. It's something that you're very motivated to get up and attack. Like it's, it's a new stimulus that you're just like, wow, let, yeah. let's see what I can do with this today. So yeah, yeah you, I totally agree. You know, when people are changing okay. behaviors, a uh, one strategy is to change uh, where they live or their office or their furniture because mm. it's like it feels like you're new. So changing mm. your goal uh, in the gym to something you normally don't do could actually do that. Well, now you're going to... So let me ask you this. Do you normally train with weights for strength, for stamina? Do you do short rest period, long rest periods? Like what is your tendency when you work out in the gym? Uh, I think I train for strength, uh, mostly maintenance. And then I started noticing after listening to you guys talk about rest periods, I think I used to take really short rest periods. Mm -hmm. And so I've actively been thinking about Adam pulling me down by my shirt and saying, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I got to sit my ass down or wait a minute. What, um, what would be more out, like out of the ordinary for you? Training for right now. Okay. Talking about right now, training mm -hmm. for lots of, endurance and stamina or training for like maximal strength, like a power lifter, which one would be like more out of the ordinary for you? Uh, endurance and stamina okay. for sure. I'm going to send you maps cardio. Okay. Okay. I'm going to send you maps cardio. This is going to be like a stamina endurance based training program. Okay. Plus it's, it involves, uh, you know, cardio workouts that you do on your own. So it's going to give you a lot of flexibility to go outside. You're in Hawaii, so you can probably go outside almost any day of the year. Um, and you can use any form of cardio on that particular day, whether it be swimming, which I'm sure you're excellent at running, biking, whatever. I'm going to send that to you. Take a look at it. If it looks like okay. something that'll take you out of your comfort zone and you think you can mentally focus on, on, on trying to train this particular way, I think it would be a great way to kind of give you a different start. I, I think it's a great suggestion. The, the last thing I'll add to that is that, and, and that's why I didn't want to pick something for you is because somewhere in there there's something you've thought about doing before or you've never really put effort towards whatever that is i, I would become focused on that and, and you could do that in conjunction with the maps cardio or by itself i just think that you get a lot of value from changing your fitness goal like you never have before and c becoming a little obsessed about that like to where you're thinking yes. about uh, kind of throughout the day like oh man i can't wait to practice this or i'm going to try this yes. and add this like so the cardio day will do that right yeah like, no that's why i like the cardio record be biking rowing there's, we anything. gave a, we, we built a lot of flexibility in that for you to kind of pick your own your own stuff so uh, and yeah. then let's let's put val are you not in the forum are you in the forum yet or no um, I don't have social media. So oh, I'm wow. Good for you. Wow. I, I was just thinking I you. couldn't possibly like her anymore. And then you said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, shit. I don't want to make you get on there for us. So. Well, I know. I knew you guys were going to ask this. And I was like, do I make a fake Facebook to be on the forum? And I was like, nah, I can't do it. You know what? You know, it's funny you say that. I would venture to say that we have the largest, uh, forum of people that have actually done that meaning like we i think we have a lot of it's people so that, true. that yeah. are conscious like create of a facebook we have so several people that have had to create Those just so they can be in the people. forum they don't use it for anything else yeah. but yeah. They, they want the access in there so that i i've never seen that anywhere else but i think yeah. we have enough people that are are actively trying to stay off of uh, social well, media well look we'll send you maps cardio and then if you change your mind we'll give you access to the forum because i would love to hear from you i want to hear i want some okay. follow-up okay yeah. yeah at least follow up with us at least email in a couple months and let us know how things are going yeah, for sure. I could do that. Um, I kind of had a feeling you guys were going to shoot for cardio. And I honestly <laughs> had a feeling that that's what I needed to do because oh. last January I did a bulk from January to April. And I mean, I got real thick. And so <laughs> I love it. 
ever since that bulk, I've just been bulking around, you know? Okay. Right. And so I know cardio is what uh, I need. It sounds like Shake you know it up. That. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to hear. Thank you, Val. <laughs> Thank you. So I had, do you guys want to hear my second question or are we out of time? Oh, oh no, I think we're good. Go ahead. Doug, Doug says no, well, but we say yes. <laughs> okay, well, let's Doug keep it short no. and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it kind of goes with the first question. How can I totally reset gut and brain health after being a heavy drinker for 25 years? So uh, I kind of have some ideas of where you'll go with this, but I wanted to, I guess, hear it from you guys, what your thoughts were well, on that. Well, I don't know if you could reset, uh, but slowly. So anytime you change your diet radically, so you, you go from consuming alcohol to not consuming alcohol, your microbiome changes mm -hmm. and your brain starts to adapt and change along with it. So alcohol consumption can change the, um, the hippocampus of the brain. It can change different regions of the brain. And the brain is plastic and it does take time to adapt. You're four months in, you've probably already mm -hmm. noticed some changes, but mm -hmm. give it a year, give yeah. it a year. And then that's where you're going to see all that stuff. So now if you have poor gut health and you're, and you think there may be an issue, that's why yeah. I would recommend working with like a functional medicine practitioner. Um, our team, uh, we have, we work with a team with Dr. Stephen Cabral. What's the, maybe we'll get the website. Is it? I think it's Stephen Cabral.com. I'll double check. Yeah. Stephen spelled with a P -H. I, I also like the advice given about the fasting for this reason too, though. So every time Please. you come out of your fat, one of my favorite parts about doing those 24 yeah, hour point. fasts is mm. I, I get, I feel like I get closer and closer to really a, finding all the foods that really agree with me and disagree with me. And so mm. treat those fasts like that. Like as you come back out of the fast, really be uh, hyper aware of as mm. you introduce certain foods, like which ones are agreeing with you, which ones are not, and then try and formulate your. So those diet. moments during the day where you feel a bit triggered, like I would normally go to like cope and, and grab a drink and maybe it's like the end of the day or maybe whatever it is, like how to build new associations to then, you know, start patterning. So that way now this is something else that you're kind of like creating as a new behavior. Yeah. And then there's a, there's another company we work with that has a probiotic that's just phenomenal. It's not a cure all, but it makes a difference. It's uh, seed, seed.com forward slash mind pump. Um, so if you're not taking a probiotic, you can even, you can even try that. Also, be aware. Okay, uh, we keep adding stuff to you right here. <laughs> of your like your military background and desire to want to do more and like and like you, I think you're doing a phenomenal job. I think you're heading on the right path. You're already the fact that you're aware of what's going on. Uh, don't throw too much at yourself at once. Okay, yeah. so so. You know, f focus on one or two things, really drill it home, really assess it, get better at it, implement it, and then, you know, move to the next thing. You, you got a lot you're doing and you're moving in the right direction. I know the desire a lot of times, especially people that are very diligent, organized, and all about it, like they want to keep stacking on that. Um, yeah. Uh, be patient. Be patient. You're doing You're doing great already. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. You got it, I really appreciate your guys' time. I've been dying to be on here and talk to you guys. So awesome. uh, thank you. if you ever really want to think about having a female guest every now and again, I'm your chick. <laughs> all right, Val. <laughs> Thanks, Val. <laughs> thank you, Val. Stay, <laughs> in, <laughs> stay in Just touch. Just invite please. us to Hawaii. That's yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah go. actually, I got to tell you, I moved, to, I moved to Colorado three weeks ago. So, uh, I'm sitting here in six inches of snow right now. But <laughs> talk, about a, talk about a shift. Uh, well, yeah. that's not I have a either. condo in Hawaii, so it'll always be home, though. Awesome. 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 Thank awesome. you. All right, Val. Thank you. Take it easy. Awesome. All right, guys. Take care. Bye. -bye. Well, I know we're, we're we're short on time here, but I just want to say I love that lady. She was great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah great, yeah. great stuff. Great, Good great, people. great questions. Yeah. And, but that's common. You cut one thing out. And you'll naturally replace it with something else if it's a coping mechanism. So yeah, yeah. and also like it, her, she's got a lot she's doing. She's doing well, and to not overwhelm yourself. She's totally. facing it, and you know more power to her. Just you know keep keep it up. Our next caller is Donald from Idaho. Donald, what's happening? Nothing much, guys. Nothing much. What this part of Idaho? Exciting. What part of Idaho are you at? Uh, right now I'm in Caldwell. It's it's like thirty minutes away from Boise. Thank you. That, Potatoes. Uh, that yeah. helps. Potatoes. <laughs> yeah, lots of potatoes. Uh, yeah. All right, go ahead and ask your question, my friend. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give a little background. I'm going to just kind of read my email. So, <clears throat> um, so to start it off, I'm a new trainer. I've been training for almost two years at this point, and one of the most common things that I see is the upper back rounding when doing hip hinge motions. 
And so uh, I do a lot of powerlifting. And so I find that's pretty prevalent. However, as I do this for myself, I know how to take care of it. But when I have a client <clears throat> who I guess is new and doesn't really know their own body all that well, I find it hard to how like to help them connect. Uh, and so I guess in essence, the question stems from I was having a client do a light kettlebell RDL, and then as they were performing it, their upper back was rounding like excessively. And so I took the weight away. We tried a different, a uh, couple of different options. I tried to do the PVC pipe three point connections, uh, no success, and ended up taking an entire session trying to focus solely on just the upper back rounding. And so my, my main question here is I felt like I did a disservice taking so much time spending on one thing. And I was wondering if there was a more efficient way to do that. Okay. So you didn't do a disservice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good good question. Though. That's a very important part of yeah. being able to do certain exercise, important exercises correctly. And with new client, this is the, this was one of the biggest differences between me when I was a shitty trainer and me when I was a good trainer. Shitty trainer, Sal, move to the next exercise, do something else, keep them moving. Good trainer, me, noticed something like that, and I would spend the whole session yeah. working on that particular issue and eventually getting them to be able to do some of these very effective movements. You paint and a completely new vision for what they need and like yep. what that protocol is going to look like, and you're going to build them up and, and, and get their body and their posture in a position where now we can load, and it's going to look so much better in the future if we go in this direction. How you communicate this, though, is the part that yeah. Sal is leaving out that made him such a – like his ability to sell the importance of that – is as important as your knowledge on what to do. Yeah, because otherwise they're like, what are we doing this whole time? So I actually just had this conversation. It was more around, which is the same thing, uh, corrective exercises that the, their client need to do. And this trainer came to me and she's just like, you know, I just, I feel bad. They're paying me 150 an hour and I'm, I'm doing all these tedious on the floor corrective exercise stuff, right? And I said, so the way I communicate later on uh, uh, like this to a client is I would take them through I would explain the importance of us doing this and saying, listen, I don't, I don't want you to waste 150 bucks an hour on me holding your hand through this process every single workout, but I can't stress to you enough how important it is you do this every day. If you, if I know you want to lose X amount or you want to look a certain way and we're going to do that together, but I can't stress to you how important it is that you do this. Now, my goal for you is for me to teach it to you and you do it two, three times a day, practicing it, trying to work on the, the, these corrective movements to get us in better posture, better alignment. But if you don't, it's so important to me that I will do it with you. And so my goal is for you to, to do it on your own, but I know that some clients, they, and then some, and when you present it that way, you'll get one of two things normally. They'll be like, okay, I get it. Like I need to do this on, on my own or some, I've had this too, which is okay. Clients go, Adam, if you, if you don't take me through it, I won't do it. So if you say it's that important, then we, but you got to sell how important it is first. So you don't feel like I'm giving them a disservice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a, there's a myth around exercise where, whereas people believe that if they're not sweating and burning and muscles are, aren't hurting, that they're wasting the workout. So I'm going to use an analogy right now that I think paints this pretty well. So you have cardio boxing classes, and then you have actual boxing classes. One of them, you learn how to box. The other one, you're just moving through the air and you're simulating boxing to try to get a workout. Okay. When you go learn how to box, a good boxing coach is going to have you practice the jab, the straight, a cross, a like a million and one times before you go and actually work out, before you go and you actually spar. Who's more fit, a boxer or a cardio boxer? Who's more fit? The boxer is. Why? They got the skill and they're doing it properly. Now, in the beginning, they had to learn the skill. Exercise is a skill. All these exercises you teach your client are all skills. They're not just moving. If it wasn't a skill, they wouldn't need you, Donald. They, they could go in. You could, and this is what I would tell my clients. Look, these are skills. I'm going to teach you how to master these skills because then we can reap the benefits of them. Otherwise, you're just moving, in which case you don't need me. You could just come in here and pick 10 different random movements. You could wave your arms in the air and sweat, and that'll be your workout. And this is why that's not effective. And here's why mastering these skills is so effective. So the beginning of our training together, a lot of it is going to be teaching you 
how to utilize these skills, how to master these skills so that then we can reap the maximum benefits of them. So now along those lines, there's two things I like to do to help teach someone to keep their upper back from rounding when doing a hip hinging movement. One of them is a waiter's bow with the hands behind the head. So hands behind the head, shoulders squeeze back. It's almost like a good morning, except there's no weight. Mm -hmm. And the entire time they're going forward, they have to keep their shoulders back and their hands behind their head, and they can't let their elbows come forward. So that's an easy cue. The second thing would be an actual PVC pipe behind the back, like a good morning, still maintaining the same position. But the waiter's bow is, is superior, in my, in, in my opinion, at teaching proper positioning when you do a hip hinge in terms for you know the upper back. So that's what I would yeah. do with someone because then they could feel it. As they bend over, they could feel their elbows coming forward. They could feel their head going down. So they have to keep this up while they bend yeah. over. And it, it, it gives them that feedback that they t they typically need. So you can work on that. You can work on the mobility and the priming and spend some good time with that. And then reinforce that with the strength training, right? So take your time by doing seated rows with really good posture, making sure that they're bracing and they're keeping their shoulders back and and down and, and locked in good position. Um, and so like you can still do the the weight training side of it. You're just really reinforcing their their posture and and their core control and an and ability to maintain that position. Now, not to overcomplicate this tip, but there 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 is a bit of a nuance here in in upper uh, rounding of the back, right? So I think Steffi Cohen actually just did a post a couple of days ago and I got tagged. A bunch of people tagged me because they wanted me to de debunk what she said. Obviously, I didn't respond because there was nothing to de debunk. She was correct. Um, and that that's because there is nuance around this. If you look at the way... I deadlift versus Sal, it looks very different. In fact, Sal has a bit of a, a, a rounding of his upper back. It's his, that's his, but he, he still has very stable control mm -hmm. of his upper back and it's supported. So there, there is this uh, bit of a, a, a misunderstanding around proper deadlifting form that you have to have this, you know, rigid kind of like right. neutral spine where your, your peel, your shoulder blades are it's really peeled just back. when it's excessive. That's, what it that's is. right. Or there's movement in yeah. it. Right. So or if I saw a client moving the upper back while we're deadlifting, but some people are in kind of a round, uh, you know, Jordan shallow deadlifts like this too. You see him actually yeah. intentionally round his scapula right before he goes into it. And he kind of stands in this rounded position as he comes up. Uh, and again, Sal deadlifts this way too. And it's not because he has bad form. He's got incredible form, but it's some people have that, that posture when they, when they actually deadlift and it is safe and okay. So learning to be able to decipher with, this is a person who has no control of their upper back. I see movement in it. It can be dangerous versus their posture is a little bit rounded like this. And that's very natural yeah. and normal for them. So here's a good, here's, here's what I would do in a session like this. So let's say I was training a client and this was an issue. I would spend 20 to 30 minutes focusing on maintaining upper back stability while hip hinging. And then I would go and do single leg uh, toe touches. That's our hip hinging exercise because it doesn't require uh, that rigidity in the upper back or or the control. So that now we're doing the hip hinging exercise, but this is after we worked on the upper back. So And I would focus on single leg toe touch, toe touch type exercises until I felt like I had that upper back issue under control. Okay. That's uh, that's quite the game plan. So thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> you got it, man. Now you're a trainer, so I'm assuming you have Maps Prime and Prime Pro. Uh, I do actually. I ah. got it before Andrew or Adam oh, started bullying everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Such a bully. Yeah, I would give it to you if you didn't have it. I just want way. to point out, sales are up by three percent since I started bullying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to get them up to ten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, all right, man. Well, thanks for calling in. Okay, thank you. I also could just gotta say. Uh, Thank you for like what you guys are doing. Seriously, you guys have helped uh, cultivate me into being a better trainer. Uh, you guys actually ha helped me uh, pursue my passion of being a trainer. So if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing. Uh, and then just helping cultivate me to be like just a better man. So oh, thank wow. you. Are you in the, Donald, are you in the forum awesome, yet? Dude. Are you in the forum? Uh, I'm not. All right. I'm, I'm going to have Doug give you access to the forum so you can say what's up to us, especially since you're a trainer. Keep us. There's a lot of trainers in that forum. So you guys can all, a lot of them network together and help each other. So it's a good place to be. Oh yeah. Badass. Thank you guys. All right. Got got him. Him. All right. Take it easy. You know, what's funny about that is that we n almost never glorify being a trainer. We talk about how hard it is. It's hard yeah. to make money. Yeah. Really? You know, it's gotta, you gotta have a lot of passion. Otherwise it sucks. 
and yet so many people become trainers when they hear us talking about it. So it's passionate good. people out there. That's though, what it is. You know, dude. it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's yeah, I think it resonates with people who have a passion for it. I love so it. Like, you know you what? Know, I want to do. Did that. you guys see the post that Steffi Cohen that I was referring to? No, but I I've didn't. heard that before. But yeah. So true. yeah. So yeah. I got I got tagged on it. I should have brought it up on the show the other the other day when it happened because it, it, so many people tagged me and wanted me to like shit on the post, and I'm like, you, you guys have to listen to what she's talking about, like. There, there is. I mean, you have a rounded back. I know your your upper back is definitely rounded. When you some of the best that. deadlifters in the world yeah. will tend to pull yeah. that way, and I think it's a leverage thing. Yeah, but you, you, there's a difference between form that you're aiming for with a client, mm -hmm. and then form that top level competitors and athletes oh, tend to use for sure. Yeah. High I, performance, yes. right? I, I think the main thing, if you're a coach and you're trying to distinguish the difference of the two, you know, it's the it's the control. Like yeah. you have absolute control of that upper back completely, and there's no waiver or movement right. throughout the movement, yes. right? So as you deadlift, you stay in that very fixed position all yeah. the way yeah. up. So the thing that I would be coaching to is like be aware of it's they could have good connection and have good stability in mm -hmm. that place. They're just that's their kind of their posture, right? Yeah. Well, I would say too, if is it creating dysfunction in other movements? Is it is right. it a pain? Is it a pro you yes. know, problematic in that sense? Yes. So that that's what I would assess. Totally. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam, and you can find me on Twitter at MindPumpSal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 